guys, this is Chris. And this is Colin from Creator Industries. So we are doing something different today. Mm -hmm. We are going to do a live build team creator. Build. Yeah, this is from our, bo our from Box to Mock series that we normally do. We just didn't do it separately. We didn't do it over the weekend. It's Tuesday right now. We asked you guys to send up some questions. Yep. So we're gonna be doing, like you said, a live build as well as some Q&A. So that should be fun. I think we had a lot of questions come in from the community, so it's really exciting to uh, get to see what they uh, asked us. I'm really curious, but I did get a chance to see most of them. They're, <gasps> they're really fun. Wow, and uh, we're sneaky. gonna have tons of fun talking to them as well as uh, building together. We haven't built together ever. Mm. No, like, not never. Well, just we not recently. Not recently, but we will be doing more of those, especially leading up to BuildCon, I hope. Yeah. Um, but definitely. yeah, shall we um, Shall we get started? Like, yeah, well, I mean, we should, probably, we should probably break this open and then um, we can start having some more details. So sure. I guess to uh, get this thing started. Where did you pull that knife from? Yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> If you want to eat something yummy, you need to have a nice sharp knife. That's true. Is that your chef knife? It's a chef knife. Awesome. The anticipation is killing me. <laughs> Alright. Open this, opening this up. This is the Queen What What's Whatever? Whatever us. Whatever. Build whatever box. Yes. We're gonna build yummy. Oh sorry. Did I hit you? No. <laughs> but I hope it looks like it on the video. Let's get that out of there. For a box to mox, the only thing you don't need is the instructions. Oh. Oh, there's only what, five bags. So, oh, that's probably really loud. Yeah. ASMR. I like the box. I like the box that it comes in. Yeah, it's actually a really nice, like, almost like a kid box. Yes. So, usually, whenever I open these, I always take the smaller pieces off to the side, but I don't know. How do you do it? Oh, there it is. Oh, the teal, the teal one. I really like the teal colored brick separator. If you guys don't have one, I also don't have one. So maybe I'll steal it because I know Chris does. What, these? I oh, you have to. I love the new teal ones. They're so nice. So this is the blue one. So I'm going to keep this kind of separated. Uh, to answer your question, yes, I separate small pieces from large nice. pieces. That will make it easier. From my actual box, what's your actual box to mox routine now? Because it's probably different from mine. Well, I open up bag one all the way, like I, I actually o open them in order, and then I look at the pieces, and then I, I try to understand how I'm going to put it together. So I have some idea, but I look at the pieces first before I say, I'm going to build this. I so. always go in the exact opposite. <laughs> I mean? always think I want to build this. Ah, I hope I have the pieces for it. That's... And then I get halfway through and I'm like, I don't think I have the pieces <laughs> for it. But I, I, so, I separate all my pieces by color. Oh, okay. I always separate them in the oh, color. Oh, that's a good idea. And then uh, I have, yeah. So you can color block. Well, just so I know. I, I don't know, for whatever reason. I think I just, uh, I remember the pieces by the color. Ah, I'm like, I know I have this piece, it's in gray or something okay. like that, or I know I have this piece in, in black. Well that, actually, that would make things easier. Cause, you uh, want to color block him? Yeah, we could, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I'm, I'm down for it, because did you remember like a lot of the new, a lot of the new sets that we've been getting, um, I think Dark Ages, I color blocked. Like, I your, just- Your build you color blocked, but did you actually color block it while you- I was, yeah, because the, I, I have oh, to Oh, these are printed. With, I know, look at these faces. Interested. Interesting, rather, Let's not interested. Can, those up. I don't know if I can see it, but mm -hmm. probably not. Yeah, like color blocking. Um, I start. I have to agree with you. Like remembering the pieces by color definitely is a really um, important thing. I did do that a few times, especially with uh, divas, divas, Reinhardt. Like a lot of the new sets that we've been getting, especially with the two tone. Yeah. Okay. First question, Chris. Mm. How do you yeah. sort your apps on your phone? <laughs> By color. <laughs> I knew I'm it. one of those weirdos. Like, I don't know if here you guys can see it. No, no one's gonna see it. I don't know. I'll have to zoom in on that. But yeah, I sorted by color. Blue is light. Black is just black. Those are like all the utility what if, apps. What if they don't fit in that color though? Oh, I throw them in. They, they belong somewhere else. So I, if they don't belong in that color scheme, I put them under tools. 
Right. So tools has like red, purples, oh, and yellows. And then files are white, and surf is like all the things that you do. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of like different categories I have. I used to call it, I used to name them by color, like the, the categories, but yeah. It just helps me organize it. I don't know. Helps, makes things easier. Okay, so now that we're kind of getting started and you guys are tuning in, how about we answer the first question? I'm gonna go are you gonna go in order or how are you gonna choose them first? Uh, I'm just gonna go down, like from top bar, the first question all the way to the top. What if all the last questions are bad? No, actually they're pretty good. I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, I actually, yeah, they're pretty good. So starting with, starting with, hold on, let me see if I can get this person. Psych fan one two one three. Get psyched. Yep, they ask, what has been your favorite build you've ever done? Hmm, that's a good one. Like, are we talking about creators? I don't know. Or um, in general? Um, what has been your favorite build you've done, ever done? Uh, wow. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, do you want to do this by creator or you want to do it by... Yeah, let's do creator first. Okay. Let's do so far with all the seasons. Um, that's taken place. What has been your favorite so far? It depends. Two two part answer. <laughs> My favorite, uh, the favorite one that I actually got to build. I don't know why it was just the most satisfying was the catapult. Oh yeah. Or the trebuchet. Yeah, rather. yeah. yeah. Oh. Or the it was actually called the batapult, but whatever. Yes. Uh, the batache. The batache, exactly. The batache. Yeah. Uh, that was my favorite one to actually do, just because it was mechanical and it worked, mm, okay. and it was fun to have it functional. Yep. It wasn't the most complex, and it wasn't like the prettiest build, that's for sure. But that was the one that I just seemed to have the most fun with. Mm -hmm. The one that I. Well, what's yours first? Mine you know, for I'll, I'll give you my second, my second answer after. Hmm. I think the one I have to say that was the most fun. I mean, I'm tempted to say the mechs, but I have to say the um, going back to season one, the sharp teeth. Oh, nice. Like the... Sharp teeth, season one? Oh the, yeah. The, um, the chimera. The chimera was cool because we got a really unique piece. I love the wings on that one. Uh -huh. um, and that just changed the game for me. I'm like, the fact that I was able to accomplish like an idea that I had, like I really wanted to build a chimera. It's almost like what you said with yours, like you kind of, you kind of come up with the idea and then you build it, like that. Do you want all these blues together? Are you okay with that? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Do you sort by, do you sort your trans pieces separately or you just put them in with, if they're like a similar color? With the trans, I, I just leave them. I just keep them all separated because they're kind of like the, the you final leave, pieces. What do you mean you leave them? You keep them separated? Yeah, separate. I just put them off to the side. I'm like, I don't need them. I don't need them yet, so I just put them off to the side. I <laughs> I use trans pieces so much to build on the inside if I can't. Oh, you use just filler pieces? Just filler pieces if I can't find. If I don't have an idea what I want to do with them, yeah, then I'll just use them as filler pieces. Something that I always also use as filler pieces, if we get a lot of them, are mm -hmm. the circle one by ones, Ooh. like the little dots. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So for many. Sure. So the last couple builds we didn't have any, I don't think, except for the mech. There was a little bit green. Like, I think it was trans green. Oh no, trans yellow, I believe. We have so many crowns. Yeah, she has like four different shapes, I think. Um, so, yeah, anyways, of all time then. Let's go with of all time, ever. <laughs> um, do you have any? Uh, you no, my, build my building uh, lifetime has been a lot shorter than yours. What? So I don't really what about have when we were kids? Yeah, I mean. Do you remember? I remember you building a lot of stuff. We built some stuff together, a lot of Bionicle yeah. mechs together. Yes, Bionicles for sure. Um, I think the coolest thing that we never finished was the giant mech. Oh man, that would be awesome. Ooh, we're gonna, we have the pieces. We do. We could definitely build a giant mech, especially. Uh, as the backstory, Chris and I in high school started a Bionicle slash, I think it was mostly Bionicle parts. Yeah. But it was a giant mech. 
and we were uploading the photos onto the Lego's official website at the time. I remember that. was still that. a thing. Yeah, yeah, that was still a thing. Oh my gosh. Uh, yes. And yeah, so we were I just showing that. like progress, but the foot was like, the foot was like this big, just one foot. And we remember posting the foot and it was bigger than everyone else's builds that were even on the website. That's right. I think we just ran out of pieces at that point. It's true. And we then I remember you built the head. The head was so awesome. Mm, but I think you got mad at it and then said, I don't think it's actually a head. I think it's a backpack. <laughs> and he turned it into a back piece. Anyway, As that always. was fun. That was, that was just nostalgic. But what's your favorite build that you've ever done? I think it would have to be... Hmm. I mean, you have an actual giant mech that you finished. That one was probably pretty, the most fun because we, yeah, I had my own place back then and everything, yeah, like every night, eight hours, every night after work, just power through it. Yeah. It took me uh, 40, 43 days, 96 hours in total of right. 43 days. And yeah, every building every day, it was insane. Basically, it was to to commemorate that robot that we never finished. Yeah, I And guess. I was like, I need to finish this giant robot. And after going to a Lego show, I built these like metal beard pirates. And when I saw like people were like, oh, you, your build isn't that impressive, it's small. It, it kind of hit me home saying like, oh, I have to build big to, um, to impress people. So I built the biggest thing I could ever build. Yeah, Which that's is an unfortunate myth. stigma. Why would you have to build big to build to be good? Well, it's it's one of those things in Lego shows. You'll see it. You'll see it when you go to a Lego convention. Bigger always seems to be more impressive because one, it takes more time. It takes more parts. But what people don't realize is that big oftentimes intimidates people. Like it, to me, yes, it's inspiring if you are talking to the audience. But if your build speaks for itself, it's overwhelming. You're mm. like, you, you look at your bank account and you're like i can't afford all those pieces <laughs> right so then i was like how can a normal person build big and have a good time like it almost feels like in order to be the answer is you don't have to you don't have to the exactly. answer is you don't have to you shouldn't have to build big um i think if it's displayed well and there's a good story i think that's that's, that's something that's gonna be something that creator is gonna change because like we are we're not all about size size doesn't matter it's about technique, it's about story. There's a lot of things that people are missing, yeah. um, especially with conventions. So we're hoping that BuildCon would be different from all the conventions. If and you guys haven't seen the podcast that we did, we actually talked about this in yeah. pretty good depth. So the BNC if you guys, Unsorted podcast. Uh, Sean and Matt, the Brick Amigos, yes. they have a podcast, they have a YouTube channel. And you guys can find their podcast on iTunes and and all those places. We should probably upload our episode on our site so people can see it. That's not a bad idea. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. Do that. We'll ask uh, we'll the Brick Amigos if they're if we're able to do it. So um, I'm thinking this is Ethan. One more question and start building. Yeah, of okay. course. Well, we'll do this. This was a good question. So best quotes from Tyler Oliver Oliveria. That has to be. Best quotes from, yeah, Tyler Oliveira. Okay. They ask, how did you both get into making Creator Industries? Perfect question. That's a good one to start things off. We did do a pod, well, not a uh, podcast. Our very first episodes on our YouTube channel yes. is Meet the Creators. So we did kind of do a history as well as like a little bit about how we started Creator Industries. Um, they're long episodes. So if you guys really want it, this is going to be a long episode. It is going to be a long episode. <laughs> but if you guys want to get into the depth of the whole thing, you can go back and watch that. But yeah, Chris, how did you... How did we? Well, well Creator Industries is something that Chris envisioned long before I was around. Yeah, it started back in 2016 because Colin and I, we started revisiting the dates. I actually purchased the website creatorindustries.com um, back in 2016. It's, it's not up right now. Don't worry. It's that. not up. Not yet, but we, construction. we figured out that I bought it to, back in 2016. So the idea was there. It's basically, it was going to be like a place for myself to create and do Lego things for myself uh, as a Lego studio. Um, but 
in conjunction or in parallel to what you were doing already, exactly. which was? We were doing, um, I was doing a nonprofit organization called AIMBOT. It stood for Alberta Institute of Mentors and Builders of Tomorrow. And the premise of AIMBOT was to empower, support, and motivate the builders of tomorrow, which are you guys, um, in order to have a better future. We had a mentorship aspect and a Lego aspect. And together, um, mentors and Lego, we would form this society. And uh, it worked out for the most part, but when, um, as time went on, we wanted to turn this into a career and more of a job. And Colin and I um, finally met up, um, reconnected, and we- <laughs> You say finally met up as if we'd never met each other before. Well, <laughs> sorry. We, I had moved cities. Exactly. We had disconnected for a long time. Yeah. And then- uh, Our dark ages. Eventually, my dark ages for sure. Then we eventually came back together. Yeah. And then um, I wanted to do something as well. And we were just mm. talking about our all of our ideas and then eventually Creator Industries. Because the idea was already there, yep. uh, we just worked together to push through and actually do it and create it together. That's true. So. We, one of our first shows was called Winter Build Days. And long story, that, that one was a hell of a long roller coaster ride because I was at the hospital Colin was uh, like doing a lot of things by himself. And then once I got out of the hospital, it was like go time. It was like time to show up, time to go to work, and time to put on the first uh, creator event. Time to stay alive. Time to stay alive. So yeah, anyways, um, so far, uh, yeah, that's kind of a, a short, short a synopsis short version. of how creator got started. I mean, we could probably do more deep dive on this stuff as time goes, but great question. Thank you for asking. Um, let's, before we let's go into it. Yeah. What, what are we gonna do here? What do you wanna? Okay, so thought process. Um, we got a bunch of colors, red, red, orange, purple. Um, what kind of yummy? Like what, when you think of yummy, what do you think of? Um, food, obviously. Yeah. Um, desserty kind of food or mm. things that are maybe Kind of unhealthy. I think of like pizzas and donuts oh. and stuff. Pizza's good. Pizza's, pizza's a good. good one. I wonder if we could do pizza on this. We, can we don't do have pizza. large plates. They don't need large plates to eat pizza. We can do, it doesn't have to be a large pizza. It could be a small slice maybe. Hmm, interesting, interesting. Yeah. We have lots of reds. We have dark red, we have blue. So some of the colors that are unique, like is this teal color? Like food does not generally come in that color. No. I start thinking like cakes and cupcakes and stuff. Yeah. Would be that color. Mm. The purple is definitely unique. The only thing I can think of in that color that ever comes is like taro. Oh, taro. Taro, like the That's a bubble tea like flavor you get a lot. Um, this 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 reminded me of like tomato a lot, obviously. Red is kind of tomato-y. I hate tomatoes though, so I wouldn't count that as yummy. Yeah, no. Orange and yellow could be cheese. So maybe, are, we, are we like sticking to like real life food? What it if doesn't we... have to be real life food. I'm just giving oh, you my ideas. initial ideas what I think of when something is yummy. Because you did say yummy mechs. So what does that <laughs> even mean, Chris? Maybe you can explain what a yummy mech is. No, I was just thinking of mech that generated yummy things. Oh, really? <laughs> like it fired off like um, hot dog. Hot dog buns or, or hot dogs, like hot dogs. <laughs> it, dog, it just showed out hot dog buns. Yeah, and then the other side was like, um, like mustard and um, ketchup, like something like that. Yeah, we like could do that. that. We could do something that's like a food, <laughs> no. a food factory or a food uh, generating thing or a food or, or we could do like a food fight. Well, the thing is, like, what I knew you like? You said food fight multiple times. Yeah, let's too. We had those faces too, so yeah, maybe we should use these as some sort of inspiration. Yo, what that's cool. Have? Okay, so is we it? should have. Point. There's five crowns. Wait a minute, Scott. Is there another eyes? Uh, probably. Let's see that one. Yeah, probably this. Oh, there we go. So she doesn't have a face. <gasps> or maybe she does. Oh, there it is. Oh, why did they separate oh, why, why did they separate this one of all of them? Well, I bet if we looked at the instructions, we would know. <laughs> no, they're all the same. Yeah, I know, but the way they use this probably was different. Uh, like, I guess, because she's more erratic. Yeah. Like, Let's see that box. Thank you. 
How yeah. did they use the orange one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, it was used two eyes on the side. Gotcha, not face on. Okay, fair enough. Interesting. Oh, that means there's another one. What do you mean? Another mouth, you mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's definitely another mouth somewhere. Or maybe not. Maybe they only had the mouth on the one side. Mm, I guess so, yeah. But two eyes, definitely. So, Both sides. Okay. So we could do something with the faces. Let's show all the faces. See if I can... Two in this color, and then the teal one, which is sad. Hmm. Very sad. So, are we gonna color block these things? I don't know. Or... We don't have to. I, I. This is like always the hardest part, like coming up conceptualization. with conceptualization. Yeah, conceptualization. It definitely takes time. But well, we don't have time, so. No, I don't. Well, You're you like... know what? You know what's impressive is the guys who do their two-hour live stream talking to each other and do the bot or do the uh, theme builds. Yeah. That's definitely. Well, I guess top. they planned it out. Like we're literally opened it we didn't talk about this at all and it's just where some of those guys plan it out already yeah, already true. have an idea uh this one is a really quick question could you sell just tracks without tanks i'm pretty sure you can what do you mean could you sell it could you sell just tracks without tanks that's not the best who asked that question is that a question is like is it possible or could we it's definitely possible. Yeah. Could we? I don't have any track. I don't have any track parts. I don't so have no. any either. Well, I do, but you can definitely buy it on yeah. Bricklink. Yeah, Bricklink or Brick Owl. Brick Owl. Um, you could also use Lego's website. They do have one, but I don't think it's up and running yet. But um, it might be on their pick a brick wall on their Lego website once it starts up again. So I'm not sure if it's available. But but if you're asking just because you want those pieces without having to buy a tank, without having to buy a full on tank. Sets it's, or something? Yeah. Yes, if possible. I'm trying to think, does Lego still have that? Because I, I feel like there was a Lego set that had tank threads without having to buy it. I might, am I, am I, I might, I remember seeing it at a Lego store at some point, but no. Just I, like the treads by themselves? Yeah. But I, I mean, you must be talking about like Brick Mania stuff. Because Brick Mania stuff is expensive. You already saw those, right? Mm -hmm. With the tra tank treads. So, yeah. Yeah, without buying his tanks. Exactly. Yeah, that's how he gets his treads. He buys them. Yeah. Obviously online. Brick but, Owl. Brick Link. Brick Link. Yeah. Those ones. One of those two. You'd be fine. We could probably put the links down below to just to give you your answer. Yes. So, okay. Going back to this, we got five faces. So what, what do you want to do? Do you want to do a thing? Do you want to you... eat something that has food? Faces? Don't want to? No. Hmm? No, I don't. That's why I was thinking these would be like... I don't know. We probably won't use them. I don't feel like using them unless. Really? Well, that would be like, I oh, like Sausage Party. You remember Sausage Party? I never watched that movie. But it's almost like the faces and the yummy things have food. Like, can you imagine eating something that has a face? But if it's pouting like that, it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, I'm like, uh, okay. Do you want to make food or do you want to make things that generate food? Or do you want to make a food fighting scene or? I don't know. What do you think? What like let's we gotta work together on it. It could be a food fight, but it's literally just food items fighting each other. But Instead the, of would uh, that be yummy? Yummy foods fighting well, each other. Well yeah, of course it would have to be yummy food. So that means we'll have to build different components. Like did you wanna build one big thing? I don't know. Or like I think this is too colorful to build one big thing. I know, this is intimidating. What I'm thinking is we need tan. But that's No tan. No tan or brown. Like we kind of have maroon brown. I don't know. I don't. I am. I'm actually stuck. This is actually hard. <laughs> well, I want to make a cupcake out of this thing. It looks cute. Yeah. Okay. So cupcakes are. Maybe we'll do a cupcake family. Why not? A family of cupcakes? We yeah. could definitely do that. We could do a cake, maybe like a tier. Maybe. Ooh. Well, that's just what. That's just one big thing. Yeah. We could use all these <laughs> basic bricks just to make a big cake. Yeah. Basically, like we're just building a tower. Essentially. Basically. Together? Is that really the best thing we can come up with? Like, there's a lot of pressure. These guys are like looking at us. They're like, what are these guys going to come up with? Like, I would be down for a mech. <laughs> but yeah, of not. course you want to build a mech. <laughs> but we got two of these faces. Do we have to? I think this might, these pieces might be limiting, to be honest with you. You think so? Yeah. We could just close them in. Basically. I feel like we're just going to. The faces are too. Um, 
what do you call it? it it's almost like the the signature piece and I don't want to have a signature piece on this one. Understood. So what are foods that we can come up with? Red, orange, purple. Well, yellow. I think we're going to, um, I think the video is going to cut. We're going to do a stop and then restart again in a couple minutes. So Why, what's up? Oh, we're just going to be out of time for this, for for this segment. Time. So let's stop it. We'll come back in uh, two seconds for you guys and we'll have an idea formed so that we can continue sure. building with. Let's do it. We're back. Okay, we're officially back. We just stopped the camera. Our recording well, limit is just yeah. 30 minutes on this camera for some reason, so uh, we'll have to cut every 30 minutes. So, But we just wanted to take two minutes just to formulate some sort of <laughs> idea so you guys didn't have to see our brain struggling <laughs> um, live on camera. But I think we decided with some sort of theme. Exactly. Gonna be... We're gonna go with a Michelin star hamburger. All right. Um, we're gonna come up with the concept <laughs> of uh, using these colors as food, food item, one big food item. Yeah, well, at least at least one centralized one, and then we'll see what we have left over later on. Yeah, maybe we'll do some snot work too. But the uh, the reason why it's gonna be Michelin starred is because it's gonna have some interesting interesting flavors. Oh, for and sure. So Michelin Michelin restaurants sometimes are like so above and beyond that it's like kind of like what like it's so fancy it's like is this edible yeah <laughs> so what what is the what are we gonna use the dark purple for so the dark purple is going to be um part of the buns where it's going to be a taro infused bun and then this one will be rhubarb infused or what's no beets Maybe we'll beets do beets. Or rhubarb uh beets. that's what we want to do for the bun i'm just looking at the pieces what would be the best pieces for a bun this one has very limited pieces now they realize well, it we'll have to figure out i'll have to figure that out yeah, like we'll, we'll, we'll figure out some sort of system to make it look edible it's gonna be hard this is gonna be a hard challenge what do we get ourselves into it's okay and we can red could be simply a fat tomato tomato um do you want ketchup cheese? We have mustard. Cheese. Oh, we have ketchup. Yeah, ketchup, we ketchup cheese. cheese. Um, we need pickles. We do not have anything green for I the know. pickles. Uh, we okay. could do. We got carrots. <laughs> oh god, carrots on <laughs> hamburger. It's a Michelin star, okay? That's true. These could be some sort of pickle, but it could be. God. Why is it teal? <laughs> Guys, why is it teal? We're having fun, okay? Let's just. It. We're we're not focused on creativity. We're focused on. No, mostly questions. But yeah, we're just here to build with you guys and come up with something. They're gonna be um, like, did you guys actually do your from box to boxes? Cause you that? guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't say that. Hey, that's not nice. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, I'm gonna go with a, we can start now. <laughs> but I'm gonna go with the next question. This is Hayor, uh, Hayor, you, NF Sug 2 King. I think I said that right. Man, these names are hard. Um, what's your favorite Lego set that's classic? Classic Lego set, Colin. Uh, like a specific set or a theme? Anything. So hey, what's the, your favorite the most Lego nos, set that's classic? The most nostalgic like, classic Lego set that I had, which when I think about old sets, it always brings me back just because I had it and it was nostalgic when I was really young was the, it was a pirate set. Oh! And it had the skull, you built out a skull. Yeah, yeah. And then in the back there was a spring-loaded mechanism, which I think shot out the treasure chest, or mm. shot out something from behind it. Um, yeah. But that set was just really cool, and I just remember using those pieces a lot when I was a kid. And the nostalgia of it just always brings me back. When I think of an old classic set, that's always the first one I think of. Pirates. Yeah. I don't know what set that was called. I would have to go back and, uh, Find like out. really find out what it is, but I know it's that one. one was that one was always always nostalgic to me. What about you, Chris? I think mine was a pirate too. I <gasps> like we did definitely talk about this at some point. Like yeah, I think we did. Um, pi pirate one was because um, actually here in Edmonton we have a Filipino restaurant called Jollibee, and Jollibee back then was giving away um, that was part of their kids meal. They were giving away pirate pirate stuff. So That's so cool. I, I want Lego sets giving away. Now. I know, right? It was so cool. Like they um. So at that time, they were giving away like little pirate sets that you can go with. So what I remember was I had a a pirate ship, mm. and that was I built that for hours. Like I just 
took it apart, built something else with it, take it apart, built something else with it. It was great. Like, pirates seem to be like a really fun thing because you can, I mean, you got a boat. You got a boat. Like, you, you can't really go wrong with boats, right? So. Yeah, I think the pirate themes are always really fun. I mean, I, I know that they brought back the new one because there's a, there's a three in one. That one seemed to be really popular. Lots of uh, cool parts that people are um, showing off. So I, I think I wanna, I might pick that one up. Depends. If, if, it depends if I wanna do something with Metal Beard Pirates again. Um, dip, yeah. I wanna do something with Metal Beard Pirates for Creator mm. just to show off um, what, we're, what Creator's about. Um, and I think my Metal Beard Pirates will be making a five-year debut. Uh, I yeah, it's it's been a while since I've worked on them, and everybody has a lot of people have seen them already. But I want to do something different. I want to end them off in a nice way. But every, everyone's always asking, they're like, Chris, Metal Beard is old, and you should retire them because they were my first mods. So I wanted to well, give them. I one wasn't big really around at that time, so I kind of want to see what. Oh yeah. Definitely, fun. definitely. I mean, I can even introduce new characters. Like the Metal Beard Pirates was inspired by um, One Piece, so everybody had a different role to play in the pirate ship, and it, it's just one big party. Oops. Disqualified. No. Yeah, we have instant a, disqualification. We have a rule that you don't drop pieces. Well, nobody's really judging, but but yeah. Maybe they are. So I'm building the bun. It's not as appetizing as uh, what I would like, but it's working. It's working out really well. I built a slab of cheese with a tomato on top of it. <laughs> You're just using up all your plates. Yeah. Try to like um, build snot. No, no, fine. Fine. We might have a lot of extra pieces. So on that note, um, hopefully that answers your question. Hayoru NF sug to king um and all these questions colin will be putting somewhere right like just kind of like have like a little pop-up uh, i'll put you a screenshot of them yeah yeah sweet and then uh, next one is fungi the weird what will be at buildcon great question that's a really good question that is a really good question <laughs> what is going to be a building no, i'm just kidding me yeah <laughs> you're no, gonna be there i'm gonna be there colin's gonna be there um what will be at buildcon the so, physical location is going to be interesting versus the Twitch stream. So yeah. the, the the focus on it is actually to be a live stream uh, because it was specifically created around social dis social distancing with the whole COVID situation that's been happening. Yep. Uh, so most of it is going to be online. We are going to have some physical aspect to it where we're going to have people who are in the area uh, coming by and dropping off their builds, correct? Yep. Correct. Chris and I are going to be bringing all the builds from box to box that you guys, guys have seen. Um, with some and, graphics. With some graphics and, and doing a display there. Uh, our live stream studio is going to be set up at the New Horizon Mall as well. Correct. Um, in terms of like, yeah, physical, it'll be less, but everything's going to be online. So we're going to have uh, guest appearances, people coming by uh, on the stream to chat to us. Yep. Uh, specifically, which is pretty cool. People from the community. People um, from the community, people from LEGO, people from uh, around the world, hopefully. Yeah, um, depends on everybody's, everyone's availability at this point. Yes, exactly. So um, we will see uh, about that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what it's going to be. It's going to be just a big virtual convention. So um, there's going to be a lot of prizes, there's going to be a lot of giveaways. We're gonna be, uh, gonna yeah, be a lot there's of gonna questions. be a lot of giveaways. It's gonna be a lot of build reviews, it's gonna be a lot of um, just talking in depth about the Lego scene probably. Um, yeah, kind of it'll be it'll be a really good the whole idea of it, it's supposed to be a program. Like it's not like a drop and go, it's going to be highly organized. We're gonna be doing something different that the Lego world's never seen before. Yes. Um, at least that's our hope. And you know, it's the first time someone has to do it and we're not going to say we're going to do it right. We're going to do our best to make it different because um, right at this point we want to show we want to show what creator is about and it's always bringing back to the community. 
Um, and one of the things that we addressed in that podcast that we mentioned earlier, check that out again. Uh, we'll, we'll make sure to link some, that somewhere below. But the idea was to do something that honors the artist, right? Because oftentimes when you go to a Lego event, you just see the creation. There's no story, there's no depth, there's nothing. And to me, like what, like you want to inspire people. So what better way to inspire people by telling them a story, saying that, encouraging them, saying that you could do this yourself. So we are trying to, we're storytellers. We want to tell a story um, about the creators behind the creation. So that's the whole premise of it. We're, we're going to tell a story about the Lego world through BuildCon. And I don't know, I'm excited. I, I, I don't know what kind of narrative we're going to take, but at the same time, uh, Colin and I are learning as we go. So we're taking you guys along on this journey and we hope you guys enjoy. Uh, I think that kind of, yeah, I think that makes sense, right? Uh, we'll find out if it makes sense. <laughs> Jesus. No, it makes sense. <laughs> no, it's, it's just, I know it's a bit like idealistic, but at this time, um, we need dreamers in this world. We like, need dreamers. <laughs> yeah, to come up with the different ideas. Cause like the worst thing is to have something that's stagnant, uh -huh. right? Like. Colin and I came into the Lego world thinking that we want to change it. And like, of course, there are always ways to change um, the scene. And this is our way of doing it for now, right? Like we're always going to be focused for the community and that's what we're going to stick with. So I got my bun. Let's see your bun. Yeah. It could be edible. It, is, it could be edible. It is absolutely edible. Eat it. <laughs> it is, uh, there's um, some fruits underneath it, right? It's a, it's um, it is, I don't know what kind of fruit that is. Is that a, I thought it was a I thought it was a bun, friend. It is, but it's, it's showing you the, uh, the type of, type of, uh, is that a beet? That looks like a beet, maybe. Okay, so maybe a beet. Anyways, it's, it's a beet root bun. bun. It's a bun right there. So we got our first thing. Um, so great question. First Thank thing, you for asking. Chris ignoring my cheese and tomato block. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I said it was good. No, oh you God. said it. You said build snot. Yeah, well, we have lots of bricks. Try it. Like I would, I would like literally do this. Start building like, like you can build a top. There's no problem about that. No one said there's a problem. Like just. <laughs> Sorry, you're right. There's no Get out of the way. <laughs> Build your own thing. Um, we're supposed to be working together. Unity. Thank you. Josh Hogman from, I believe he's from Sherwood Park. Um, why are you guys doing this? Just some for something to do or is there something more behind it? Excellent question. I'm assuming why we're doing Creator. Yeah, I mean, creator industry. Oh, that's a great question. We always ask, so Simon Sinek is one of our favorite um, influencers in this world, and he's a great speaker. If you're into business, uh, maybe some of you guys are not into that yet, but he's a very great motivational speaker, and he always asks the question, why? Yeah. Right? So find, find out your why. Find out your why. So what's our why, Colin? What's, yeah, here, I need to, what's your why, Colin? Uh, is this a real microphone? No, it's not. Uh, the why is pretty interesting. It really depends on, I guess, the person. Yeah. For us, it's like multiple reasons. Or for me, it's multiple reasons. One, obviously, we wanted to be able to uh, make an make an impact on people's lives. So That's we. Fine. Oh my bad. Sorry. You can just have the kidding. same thing. <laughs> just kidding. Continue. Sorry. Um, multiple. I mean, be able to to make an impact in some way, shape, or form on multiple people's lives, right? Yes. So we do we do events that are. Uh, very public oriented, very based in the community. Yep. Um, and so it's just really nice to see the, basically the impact that we make every time we run an event. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. that's obviously the first thing. Second, I mean, we, we do it as hard as we do so that we could do it for a living. So that's, it's not like, it's not like we just do this for fun, uh, we, which, which we do. Which we want to. But it's, currently our full-time job yeah so like that's it's not just something that we 
we just randomly are like just oh we just decided to start giving giving things away like we work with these malls like we work with new horizon we work with like london dairy when we did winter build days we do it as a business so yeah. i mean there is that aspect to it at the end of the day like it is it is a business for us so uh, we do have to keep that in mind as well um so some of them some people might not know i guess some yeah. of the viewers might not know that that's that is actually what we do is like we run it as a business so well we we believe that um at least for me i believe that i in order for you to be happy you have to do something that you love and are passionate about and both of us love helping people we're very passionate about lego and we're very passionate about families and communities so overall like when i was working for lego i wanted to bring that feeling that you got from um, working for an amazing company locally yes. right and it was something that we wanted to pass on like this joy that we get from building and inspiring people a lot of those things come into play so like what colin said like one of our one of my main whys is always been make a positive impact on people's lives like not a positive impact on the world which is what one of lego's missions but for me it's people's lives and how i measure success is through the number of people i help and really help people helping people we need more of those people around so yes this is a business for us but at the same time we want to make it so that um what we are able to do what we love on a daily basis because that's what makes us happy and the only way to make that work realistically is we have to turn this into a job so you guys are literally helping us turn this into a job just by being here sure so if it wasn't for you guys we wouldn't be here and we owe our our future to you guys so what we're trying to do is we are trying to return that favor by creating entertaining uh, entertaining and um valuable content yeah exactly where well, we're trying to introduce value into your guys's lives by showing you guys that um maybe maybe it is possible to turn your passion into a job um you never know we're here to help you guys out as well so the whole point of creator is to create a platform for the community to thrive for us to compete together just basically for us to grow together and we have so many plans in the future we have like i'm just gonna put this out there five thousand if we get to five thousand followers ever like soon sooner the better so we can tell you guys the future plan but five thousand just you guys wait we're gonna t say right now we're gonna have something special come up and colin have, and i have been waiting for it um it's just i'm just putting it out there so anyways uh, i'm literally building nothing here nice i'm <laughs> just like playing around um, let's see. So, uh, the next, thank you for asking Josh Hogman. Appreciate that. Um, now, of course, this is the infamous question that people are asking about. What infamous question, Chris? Is there a season three? Is there a season three? Uh, by Hot Dog Waffles. Ooh, yummy. <laughs> that, that should have been. That's yummy. That should have been good. That would have been a good one. Um. <laughs> So yeah, what do you think? Oh, I wasn't sure what you were looking at. Sorry, I, some, someone just sent me a message, so... Get off the message! Appreciate we've got, sorry. We've got answers, we've got questions to answer. So, is there going to be a season three? Uh, the answer is yes and no. The answer is yes, of course, there's going to yeah. be something happening in season three. Will there be a themed weekly contest like season one and two? That's a no. That's a no. Uh, just the, gonna... Sorry to scare you guys, straight well, up. I mean, it's, it's not it's not scary. There's just it's just new. We did we wanted to do eight weeks of contests. Yep. Get everyone excited, and then we're gonna be moving into phase two, um, or season three, I guess. Um, Chris, what what is the plan for season three? It's a little bit. Uh... So Colin has already kind of gave you guys a teaser in our story. Season three or phase two is what we call it. Is going to be pre-planned content. Try to get you guys to see a different side of creator industries a little bit more behind the scenes but we are taking you through buildcon like how we're gonna do buildcon it's almost like um bringing you guys along with us on this journey because we're all in this together and we're gonna grow together 
but why not just take you guys through BuildCon as well? And so we're gonna do those kind of content. The, through the month of July and August, we are going to be putting together BuildCon. We're gonna be bringing in people, we're gonna be contacting um, creators to be on board, and just basically like taking you guys through this whole experience that is called BuildCon. BuildCon is an experience in itself. And a lot of these um, conventions, you just show up. You show up, you drop off your thing, and you know nothing about behind the scenes. But like I said, we wanna change things up. We wanna tell you guys a story. We wanna show you guys what BuildCon is all about. So that's what we figured, like why not just take them with us? And together we will have fun. So the idea behind season three is going to be um, a large, building contest that's online mm. there is going to be no theme like colin said but we are going to be doing um online an online contest like where you submit take photos and it's going to be cut off two weeks before um build con actually takes place because we need to make videos and reaction videos all that stuff so yeah i think that kind of summarizes it good enough to give them a teaser we can't tell them everything did I tell them everything? You told them it literally. Oh my god! I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Sorry. No, it's perfect. Hopefully, that's enough for you guys to get excited. Because stop asking. I'm just kidding. Stop. Stop, stop. stop asking. We stop can't say asking. Anything. No, um, it's okay. I love. I love it when I, it shows them that they're interested. Yeah. And we appreciate that. Chris, what are you making? I've made you a. I'm, I've made you a proper tomato. Oh, thank you. Bless your heart. We're, we're literally just making stacks of whatever these I know. things are. Well, well, there's so much basic brick. I mean, yeah, I guess the only shape. Oh, there you go. That's Hey, that's good enough. Uh, sorry. Wow, that's <laughs> so rude. That's not good enough. It, this is good. This is awesome. Awesome, homie. Um, all the appreciation. Yeah, see, this is this is what he gets from me all the time. because uh, That's why we don't build it there. <laughs> yeah, you can still use this one. He gets... I'm not being... Is this the bottom bun? Yeah. It's not rounded. What do you mean it's not rounded? Well, it's a slider. It's a slider. Let's do it. Because these these um, these um uh, things that we're making are so... Um, what do you call it? Expensive to make? Sure, let's go with that. Because it's Michelin star? Michelin star, exactly. What else are we doing here? Um, Is there anything else you want to add for... BuildCon, like what what else are we doing for that? Um, for season three, you mean? Yeah, for season three. There's there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be very secretive, I guess. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that we're that we're doing. Like season three is a combination of uh, doing a build or something long form that you guys can enjoy. Yeah. Uh, while we work on the the back end stuff. Like it's it's gonna be heavy for us in the back end. We wouldn't be able to facilitate these weekly contests like we have been. Yeah. So that's sort of that's yeah. sort of why it's being formatted this way. It'll be a lot of travel, it'll be a lot of filming, a lot of Yeah. Well the filming for sure, like the traveling part you'll get to see. The, yes. the for sure. No, for sure, for sure. But it's the other parts that Colin is talking about, like well, the secret be, stuff. It's gonna be the stuff that's gonna actually it's gonna be like the the meat and potatoes of BuildCon. It's gonna be the table stakes. The table stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Table stakes. Table it's... stakes or table stakes? I don't know. Oh, I what did you say? No. Never mind. Let's not talk about table stakes. <laughs> but yeah, it's gonna be like the the hearty, the hearty content. Yeah. That's gonna be entertaining and very unique for you guys to view. So we'll show you the BTS as much as we can. Of course. And then enough to tease you guys and get you excited. Um, and that's, that's going to be what we want. That. Really is. We want to tease you guys and kind of show you guys that, like, this is kind of this is how much work it goes into putting these cons. And then at the same time, who knows? What if you guys want to be a part of it, right? Like, we're always looking for opportunity to team up with the community. So if you guys are inspired by what we do, shoot us a message. Like, we want to work with you guys. Why not? In any way we can. In any way we can. So, great question. Uh, so how are you doing so far? So we got, we got our bun, our beet, beet um, infused bun. Yes. And we got a tomato, an oversized tomato slice. Um, it is 
Uh, an oversized. <laughs> Well, it's, it's you can't just let it go, can you? No, I'm it just can't just be the thing. It is um, what it what we would call it. We grew this in Mount Fuji, so the I wonder if the conditions are good in Mount Fuji. Really, like, I thought I thought volca there. volcanic um, soil is always like the best. That's true, right? I, I I'm not sure. Um, we have a a, a very aged um, cheddar cheese, all the way from Italy. Uh, that is. This has to be American cheese. It's orange. Orange. Okay. Yeah. I guess. Cheese so. is not orange or no. Bet. I guess. Yeah. Why not? You get that really sticky, gooey, gooeyness to it. American cheese. Maybe this is the most premium, craft single slice oh, ever absolutely. created. Absolutely. We, absolutely. We freshly pulled this from the packaging. Yeah. It, it came off the line, and the onto like, the bun. Onto the bun. Exactly. <laughs> it's so fresh. It didn't even have time to refrigerate. Like, well, it doesn't know refrigeration. Or coagulate. Like, like, it was still so like, dumb. so, it was still soft. So dumb. Anyways. What uh, else do we need for this, Chris? What else can we make? Um, we well, I was thinking like, okay, so we need salad. So why not like bluegrass salad? <laughs> Don't blue be like <laughs> salad. I don't think bluegrass is actually blue, but. Uh, well, like maybe we need some veggies for sure. We definitely need like, something. We need. Or maybe that could be like the garnish, like the thing that... The drizzle? The, the drizzle? No, not the drizzle. Like the... You know like how they put some leaves or some greenery on that? I understand. Um, I don't know. I mean, if we can turn that into some sauce, that'd be great. Like a dripping Over sauce. Over top? Yeah. Over top on the bun, you think? Maybe. Nasty. Okay. This Nasty. could be our top garnish. I, I made this for you. Oh, go that's a good on one. On top of your last bun. Is there a snot that you can make for the top or no? Uh, I, I'm working on it. Actually, yeah, that maybe. Let's try. Let's see. Oh, nice, nice. I'm trying something. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah, yeah this is like... I'm making like a, some sort of uh, medley. No, no, no. <laughs> a vegetable um, medley. All right, so the next question will go with Do you like cheese? Rainbow cupcake. Oh, Yash. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yash. Yash, great question. Do you like cheese? Uh, <laughs> yes. The answer is yes. <laughs> I, like, I like pizza. I like cheese on a lot of things, but it's so heavy for you. Like, for me, I'm, I'm on a different diet now so I can't eat that many um, like dairy stuff but man cheese is amazing cheese especially is on curry Colin and Joy made this um, curry dish Joy, Joy is my wife by the way yes his lovely wife and um, we they came up with this dish like this curry dish and Colin told me to put cheddar cheese on it and holy smokes it was the best thing ever like you drizzle it underneath before you put the curry on the rice it's just like literally rice cheese and curry and man it was so delicious like I'm, my mouth is watering right now and she's gonna cook lunch for us <gasps> so we better finish this up yeah, right that's away true. we're gonna eat it after this so. um we're not even halfway through the question so colin do you like cheese i love cheese i love i love all sorts of cheese i like Mozzarella for pizzas. See Havarti. I love uh, Havarti. I do like Havarti. <laughs> I like a nice Havarti on a sandwich. There you go. I like uh, really aged American cheddar on like a burger. Yeah. I like feta cheese a lot. Like I love feta cheese. Like I'll just eat blocks of feta cheese. Mm. So good. Feta uh, cheese. I like Parmesan, like fresh grated Parmesan a lot. Oh, that, that deal that sorry that meal that we made just used a big block of fresh degraded parmesan. Yeah, what was that called? Orzo. Orzo. Yeah, that's um, good. I like I like cheese. I really like cheese. Cheese is good. <sighs> cheese is too good. So Colin's trying to put sauce on that. Um, I made my bun and we put the garnish on top. So Colin's kind of there's gonna be like a drizzle, right? Yeah, it looks like some sort of drizzle on top. I'm gonna see if I can make it come down more. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Do you have like. A, no, we don't. <laughs> you can see what I have. You can yeah. see exactly what I have. We'll leave, we'll leave that with you. Okay, so yes, we do like cheese. 
Um, next one, Hermes de Lao. De Lao? De Lao. No. Yeah, Hermes de Lao. Man, I'm terrible at pronouncing these. Yeah. Um, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. My son Angel asks, "What is the biggest creation you have built with Lego?" Oh, yeah. that's cool. Depends. Um, for me, probably the biggest I've ever built was um, I helped. I I wasn't me particularly who was the architect of it, but um, I was helping out Robin Sather, one of actually the first Lego certified professional. He lives in Vancouver, and we had a show together in Medicine Hat, and we built uh, the Canada flag for the Canada's 150. That was massive. That was about six foot tall by 10 foot wide, and it kind of like did a wave. So over the weekend, we were building that thing and the public helped of course so we were just putting it all together so over the course of 10 hours we built a giant flag and the take apart was a <laughs> imagine because you got um basically like the bricks were made from smaller bricks you had to take all those apart luckily it was just a lot of it was just white when you got to the middle of the flag you had the the uh, maple leaf in different Whoa. colors. Oh, disqualified. We're okay. Sorry, Colin. We're okay. Get out. <laughs> I'm kicking you out of your own house. Get out. I'm just kidding. But yeah, uh, that was probably the biggest creation I've built so far. But personally, it's the giant robot for me. Uh, the largest creation that I ever helped create was actually the giant Winter Kingdom. From, yeah, uh, that's true. From oh, Winter Build Days. <laughs> uh, that was Chris and I's first a uh, public show that we did with Creator Industries. It was held at Londonderry Mall in Edmonton, Alberta. Uh, what the premise of it was, was... Um, again, it was a giant winter kingdom, basically. So we had the community come out and build uh, small houses to create a village. Yep. And then Chris and I built a massive uh, ice castle in the center. And it was pretty big. It used many, many, many Duplo bricks. Uh, we had to use Duplo for a lot of it just because the scale wouldn't have been possible with regular yep. play bricks. I think it would have been, how many pieces would have been? Like probably 2,000? No, 5,000. 5,000 Duplo bricks, just about. Yeah, just in Duplo. Two by four. Two by four and two by two Duplo bricks. Trans blue. Trans blue. So Which if you guys want to see a lot of trans blue, that is the bill to go check out. We probably have the largest collection of trans blue um, more in than, Canada. More than likely. I don't know how anyone could possibly have more trans blue than us. Uh, of Duplo, of course. Of Duplo, of Duplo. Man, we're going to be doing so many builds of trans blue um, during winter. It's the best. Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. We can use it for all anything, really. So yeah. many ice sculptures. Yeah, actually. Uh, that is definitely the largest build that I was... Uh, that I was a part of, so that was super fun. Many more to come, for sure. I hope. Yeah, I hope. Definitely. We're, we want to, I, what I want to work on soon, um, for us, is going to be the giant mech that I wanted to re rebuild, see if we can actually find time um, to get that ready for BuildCon and have it on display. Um, we're Continuum Shift is my creation's name, and I'm hoping that Colin and I will have time to actually make it, um, make him, bring him back to life because he's he's been um, decommissioned, decommissioned for a while now. So it'll be really nice to bring him back, but he's going to be bigger, better. I can't wait. Honestly, he's more mechy, more mechy. Oh yeah, definitely more mechy. But great question. Um, Thank you, Angel and Hermesa DeLeo. We're going to go to the next question. Another question from Jazz. Oh, not Jazz. The question is, do you like Jazz? Is that from Yash? From Yash again. Dang it, Yash. <laughs> so anyways, um, yeah. Rainbow Cupcake, what do we have for Jazz? I mean, I like Jazz. I don't have a specific Jazz artist, but I, I was... Um, I like gin and tonic, so 
Uh, there was, I, okay, this is something that I, I don't think I can tell you guys the full details, but I was in Seattle. I went to the sketchy club that was a hole in the wall. And basically I was told to just stay by the walls and don't talk to anybody. But it was the best gin and tonic I've ever had. And it was a great jazz club. I've ever heard. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's, I can't, there's more, more to it, but I know, I'm sure there is. it's a pretty awesome jazz club. Do I, I like jazz? jazz. Uh, I don't mind jazz, but it's not necessarily something that I go out of my way to listen to. Yeah. But I wouldn't say that jazz is bad. Jazz is like nice when you're, when you're chilling. It's definitely very like, chill. Um, there's what, that new genre, I, I, I think lofi, lofi music? Is that? Lofi. Lofi, there you go, lofi. Is it lofi or lofi? I can't even. Anyways. Is it Luffy? Luffy? Ooh. The Luffy D monkey? Maybe. Um, but yeah, that's kind of, uh, I do like it. Colin does too. So the next one, that was weird. Why, why did it just get quiet? Um, best okay, snot technique for builders. Ooh, that's a good one. I was actually thinking about this the other day. Um, so Colin and I in this competition, or not competition, during this, the season, season one and two, we've been doing some snot. Um, and snot for you guys, for those who don't know, it means studs not on top. And basically like this is considered studs. Uh, it's not like kind of. Work. kind of. I mean, it's right? actually not. It's just building on top and then just laying it on the side. Yeah. Okay. So, this is much more snot. Okay. So yeah, like like this, I guess, like this. But studs not on top, meaning that you don't purposely put the studs on top. Sure. Um, like build flat, um, like that, or build like with plates like this. So one of the rules hey, that you cheese. have for for snot techniques, it, it, this is something that Nick Trotta taught me. Um, the guy is amazing. Like if you don't know who Nick Trotta is, he's basically, his name is Plast Galactic Bricks and he's one of the best spaceship builders. And he, we had a, ch a chance one time to hang out um, at uh, an Airbnb and we just like talked about Lego for hours. He showed me his workflow. Oh, honestly, if he ever does, some sort of um, show and tell about his process. Holy smokes. I wish we can get him on BuildCon. Nick and Adele, if you guys get a chance, please be on our um, BuildCon. Anyways, he told me that there's a rule of three. Basically, um, if you're doing one brick is equals to three plates. And there's a three by five rule. Uh, I believe that if you put a brick on its side, it's going to be the same height. So this is a brick, but these are five plates. One brick is equal to five plates high. I don't know if you guys can see that. But he always gave me the two by three, two by three by five rule. So three plates or five plates equals one brick. Like, and he, if you master that. And how's that helping with snot? You can build sideways, gotcha. sideways, upwards, backwards, any kind of direction you want. All you have to do is just master that formula, the three by five rule, and you've unlocked the secrets to all of brick math. So, that is the simplest way I can explain it. One brick, three plates. If you stand up a brick, it's five plates tall. So take it with that, see what you guys can do with it. Um, Colin, if uh, do you have any techniques you wanna? Yes, I talked about it in our video for uh, thing, things that go bump in the night. Ooh. And one of the sets had the chainsaw piece. And so the chainsaw piece is a thin piece that has studs on both sides. Yeah. Um, but just the the overall profile of that. What are those? Cheese. More cheese? Yeah. Cheese. Wait, what? More cheese. 
Wait, you had cheese? What yeah, shoot. Mean? What do you mean I had cheese? Um, mustard? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, it's what? fine. We can have multiple cheeses. My there? It could be like your hexa cheese pizza. Hexa cheese pizza, yeah. There yeah, it looks good. Um, so that piece, I saw it. In, I saw it on a post somewhere. I think it was on Instagram somewhere. I wish I knew who posted it. Uh, they had a discussion with their community about the thinnest way to reverse build. And so, a lot of times you'll be building, and what you'll want to do is you'll want to have studs sticking out on both sides, uh, so that you can build equally in both directions. But the question always is, how do I how do I flip it around without using a bunch of like those L-shaped pieces that have uh, like snot on the side of it. Yeah. Because if you use two of those, sure it works, but then you end up with a weird shape. Yeah. But what you can actually do is use that chainsaw piece, which will fit directly into uh, the circular studs on the bottom of a plate on both sides. And when you squish them together, it creates one of the thinnest possible profiles for reversing a build. Mm. So you can have two plates basically sandwiched against each other with a very, very minimal amount of space in between because the actual profile of that piece is so thin. I like that. So, just That's something cool. interesting. If you're doing plates, it works uh, better just because you can hide that actual piece. Um, but I just thought that was an interesting an interesting bit of knowledge that uh, that they that they released for that, so. There you guys go. What's this, what do you got? I don't know, I kind of, I, I was thinking bacon, but mm. it's just a different style of doing it, no, not really, I don't know. Oh, how are you able to give away so many sets? <laughs> well, now it's a good time to talk about our sponsor, which is um, for BuildCon. Yeah, so if you guys have seen our previous videos, you probably know by now, if you haven't, uh, this video, as well as all the previous ones and subsequent ones after this, and BuildCon as a whole, is brought to you in part by uh, New Horizon Mall. Thank you. So New Horizon Mall is uh, a mall based out of Airdrie, uh, yeah. Alberta, which is in the Calgary area. So if you guys are ever in that area, uh, please go check out New Horizon Mall. Awesome mall, great location, uh, super unique in terms of like the, the space, the space building architecture, which actually makes it really good for, for BuildCon mm -hmm. and displays Absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. Um, but they're the ones who are making it possible for us to do this. So uh, that's that's how it's possible for us to be able to do so many so many giveaways. Yeah. Well, I mean, we they were really um, kind enough to look at our idea and consider it something really good for the community, especially the Alberta community. And during this time of COVID, it's really important to to do things for the community. Yes. So they took it upon themselves to become to initiate such a cool program. And yeah, we're just happy to be a part of this and we're just thankful that they they um, they gave us this opportunity. And touching so. base back on our, this is a business again for us, remember? So you have to think that we'll always be in, in the works with, with somebody. So um, most of our, most of the business that we do are large scale public events. Yeah. We run them for companies, usually malls. And so a lot of times the mall plus our sponsors are the ones that make it possible for us to be able to do stuff like this, so. We're always looking for new opportunities, so if you guys ever want to team up, if you guys are part of a, a company that wants to do something for the community, especially LEGO related, we are your people. We are the guys. Yeah, that sounds better. Um, let's see, how are you able to give... Oh yeah, that's a sick... Oh, sorry, that was LEGO Trump World, by the way. Um, thank you, LEGO Trump World. Now, one question... Fraser's got a lot of questions. So one Fraser, one, what do you think would happen if it weren't for New Horizon Mall? Oh, that's a great question. It's a follow-up. Nice, I guess um, that worked out really well. Yeah. What would have happened if it weren't for New Horizon Mall? Yeah, nothing. No, not nothing. No, we would have found something Okay, else. first of all, again, this is a business. We, we plan our calendar out based on availability, yep. based on specific events that our venues want to do. Summertime obviously gets pretty busy because a lot of people want to do a lot of things. Uh, New Horizon New Horizon was the one that stuck with us through COVID. So they were given the opportunity for us to, to, to run with them. Mm -hmm. um, but we do work with a lot of other <laughs> a lot of other companies. So it wouldn't have been nothing. Yeah, but that's true. Uh, BuildCon probably wouldn't have been formatted in this sense. Actually, um, that's true. We would have just done something different. 
we are going to be uh, announcing a new event. Probably yep. better time to announce it now. Sure. Um, we do. Ha are, we are working with a company or another uh, property management called uh, New Horizon. <laughs> Sorry, called Millwood's Town Center, and in our location we have an event called Yego. Yes. Uh, y E G is our airport designation. Yes. And I just came up with the name Yego so that uh, we can have. We can have it's, it's um, something Yeg, related. which is the short form for Edmonton's yep. International Airport plus Yego, or Lego together, equals Yego. Exactly. So clever, Chris. So clever. So yeah, we're kind of doing some, something with that soon. That'll be almost happening at the... It's happening before. Technically, it is happening before. It's yep. happening on the 21st. Um, it will be not live streamed, but it'll be um, all recorded in person for, uh, for the mall. Mm -hmm. So... If you guys are interested in that, you're gonna see it on our YouTube channel, so please go and subscribe. Yes. But we'll be announcing those quite soon because that's coming up. Registrations will be up for that in on the 15th, yes. so next week. Oh yeah. So just stay tuned. Good timing, good it timing actually. It's gonna be excellent timing. So good question. Um, like you said, we'll find, we'll always find ways to give back to the community and- Before you go to the next one. Yeah. We built a burger. Yes. We've got a lot of pieces. <laughs> What do you want to do? I, well, I was working on the gar like the, the things to go with a burger. Like These look got... like shredded carrots kind to of. me. That's I kind of was making a carrot, but I wasn't sure how, we're, how I was going to do it. Either carrots or... This also or... looks like shredded cabbage. Yeah. Yeah. To me. Yeah, for sure. I, that's kind of why I was making that shape. Is it? Is it? Yeah, I, I think. Yes, yeah, sort of. We'll call it Just that. Just kidding. Um, yeah, I was kind of making something to go along with our burger, just kind of like the garnishing. Like, I wanted um, sweet potato fries. Oh, sweet, those look like sweet potatoes, totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like something that does that. Uh, um, oh. The next question that we have is, your favorite non-licensed Lego theme? <laughs> so, Lego has a thing where they call it the Evergreen lineup, and those are things that aren't licensed by Lego, so nothing that's Disney, you would consider evergreen as knights, castles, pirates, anything Their that doesn't space have program, program. yeah, classic space, that stuff like that. Nice. So what do you think? Uh, well, I kind of mentioned it before. One of the most nostalgic sets for me was one of the pirate sets. Yeah. So I think I don't know. I really like the pirate stuff. Mm. I wish I saw more. I well, wish there was a lot more. Definitely, yeah. I mean, the new one, the new set is really nice. The the three in one set that would be super awesome. Yeah. Um, the other one, I would say, my favorite set of all time. Wow, I really like the Ultra Agents lineup. That one, I was blown away by how well the colors went together and the stickers. So basically, uh, Ultra Agents, if you don't know, it's black and trans blue. So it, it was very Tron related. Yeah. You, so I'm like, man. You really want more Tron stuff. I do. I wish uh, I wish I had more of the Tron set. I don't know if that's still available on Lego Lego Ideas, but yeah, it's such a good lineup. Couldn't. I would love to get more of them. But yeah. But I mean, Ultra Agents. Um, what else is there? Uh, Pirates is is definitely a fun one. But so far, the ones that really stood out was that and Rock Raiders. Rock Raiders, Raiders. are, they, I believe they have the teal. Okay. Um, teal brown and dark gray. And basically they had giant drills. Yeah. Giant yeah, foam remember. drills. Yeah, there you go. That was a good one. Uh, ooh, here's a good, another good question by Pine Tree Bricks. Uh, both of those questions, the favorite non-licensed theme and this new one, a favorite piece, Pine tree bricks. What's your favorite piece? Dang. Oh man. Is that even Dang. possible to answer? Yeah, I would say so. I, mm. I, 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 I think there's a piece that I always love using. Really? Yeah. Tell him, Chris, because I don't know how to choose what a favorite piece would be mm. for me. Well, um, one of the newest favorite pieces that I like is... Um, especially as a mech builder, the bar with clip. The bar with clip is something that um, every mech builder should be using. 
not that I dictate how neck builders <laughs> should be building, but just a, it's a staple. Like everyone, the, because of that bar with clip, um, you can build uh, so many different things. Like you can't build, you can build like uh, joints, like anything moving with that. It's it's actually quite fun. Oh man. So I don't think I have a favorite piece. I think that's way too limiting of a question. In just, my opinion, just one that you've run into that you're like, man, this is a, this is a really essential piece for no not for essential. my technique. There's one that's a favorite piece that we just ran across that I really liked, and that's, that's the chainsaw. No, that's the uh, Reinhardt shoulders. Oh, that was a cool one. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool one. That's so. That's a hard part to use, bro. I know, but I just really like how you can use it as like a head. It just, it has a perfect shape for like a head with yeah. a mono eye and then yeah. like a shoulder pads come down. I actually want to buy tons of those. I know, me too. That thing is actually, yeah. I should go to Bricklink right now. <laughs> Get some of those. No, that's, that's the only really thing really I can think part. of. That was just, it was just so unique and interesting. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree. Have you guys, whoever wins um, the essential mechs challenge, um, you guys will have fun building something like that. You know, I was actually thinking the other day, the ones that actually received our prizes, maybe you guys can do a from box to mox, your own from box to mox. That'd be pretty cool. Like, you know, kind of so we can add it to our thing where they build theirs and we build ours. That'd be cool. Yeah, if you guys ever received any of the sets that we use for a box to mox. I don't know that. If you ever, we are gonna send it out. That's not what I meant <laughs> at all. I meant, if you are lucky enough yes. to have received. Correct. Yes. Then please. <laughs> Sorry. No, I, just hickers. people keep asking us. They're like, when are we going to get the sets? COVID, guys. Just wait. It'll, it's getting there. I don't know what this is. Carrot? <laughs> it's a guess. I don't want to say. A giant I, carrot. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Derry Maldo asks, why for entries you don't want renders? Some people may lack of pieces. I mean, that's a really good question. Uh, that's a really good point because Colin and I talked about this um, before the contest started. And yeah, I, you know, there's, there's an easy answer to that, right? I think. Well, one of my main reasonings is that it doesn't matter how many pieces you have. Uh, it's fun to be able to force yourself to build something with the pieces that you do have. Correct. That's why we do box to mock. That's why we think it's an interesting series. That's why we like to do it that way. If you guys have seen Chris's Lego studio, if we just use the parts of the Chris's studio, we'd have unlimited pieces to use. Yeah, and it's like, a bit unfair. It would be crazy. Like it would just be too much even. Yeah. And so to the reason why we limit renders is for that exact same reason is to force you guys to to really think outside of your, think outside the box, think outside of your normal comfort zone, think outside of your normal building techniques. And if you had renders, you'd basically just, you'd be able to use any part available. Exactly. Which we don't think is as fun. Yeah, I, the whole point of the, these um, contests is to be able to use the time that we provided and have fun with the pieces that you have because in essence, like what we're trying to get from all these contests is use the pieces that we have. We're not trying to get everybody to buy more Lego and as well as we wanted to be you, we wanted you guys to be your own unfair advantage because everyone has a different collection and we wanted your collection to speak for itself. Because if my collection, like Colin said, if I were to use my collection, it wouldn't be fair. It wouldn't be fun. It'd be something that would be overwhelming. And these, these content that we are making, is, it takes a long time. So we wanted to make it quick, efficient, um, just for our end. But for you guys, like we said, like use your collection because you are your own unfair advantage. And without your collection, then there wouldn't be anything. So um, does, that, does that help? Does that answer the question, right? I hope so. So good question. Thank you for asking that. I know it's one of those tough decisions that we had to make, but uh, it might change. You know, it, there, there's always other opportunities that we're, we're looking at. So just, just wait. 
we, we will have something for those who like renders. Uh, next one, Adri Piqueras. I think I said that right. Um, how did you reach your partnership with Lego? Or do all your, I'm oh, sorry, or you do all this contest on your own? Cheers. Easy enough answer. We we're do not, have. We're not technically partnered with yeah, Lego. Yeah, we're not technically <laughs> partnered with Lego. We do have. Um, strong relations. Yes, we do have strong relations with Lego, but we do not have an official partnership with Lego. We just uh, do Lego contests and for the sake of the Lego community. Correct. Other than that, um, we do all of this on our own. Like when we sought out to do something with Creator, we wanted to um, do something that, no, we wanted to be able to do something on our own without anybody's help. And that's how you... That's true. That that was the one of the main goals. Exactly. I mean, it's one of those things that even I struggle with. Like, I always feel like we, we wish we could get help from um, Lego. But at the same time, like, we want to establish ourselves as a firm business, as, some, as people that we can do this on our own. And hopefully just make, make the best out of it as much as we can. And um, yeah, man, we're flying through these questions really quick. Ooh, what's your favorite type of mop? That's an easy one. <laughs> easy, easy. I'll go. I'll go answer Please. that. Mo Mex. No way, Chris. Mex for sure. Mex. Who would? Mex and been? doing something different. I want to create something. Well, I, I, I'm just speaking out loud. I have to actually do this, but. I wanna. I like building things that pushes the limit, as well as um, ha tell a story at the same time. So with the mech mech ideas that I have, which I really hope I can execute soon, um, yeah, just do that. My favorite type of mocks. Hmm. I like all sorts of mocks. <laughs> I like. I do like ships. I like uh, spaceships and mm. uh, mechs a lot yeah. as well. Um, yeah, that would probably be my two most favorite genres. I'm trying to think how do I how would I explain the other genre that I really like? I like I really like people who are good at doing um, organic shapes. It's not like a genre, mm. but just being able to build like that is so good. Yeah. That's your burger patty, by the way. That took way too much time. That's all good. Okay. Yeah. Mechs and spaceships. Mechs and They're just so much fun to build. All the pieces, you can just use, any, everything can just be... You can have fun with it. So much fun with just like... Because there's no, uh, there's nothing you can really reference. It's yeah. just whatever your imagination is, you can just do it. So. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. Um, all right. So the next question is... Oh, sorry. That question was from Pets RS. What type of mock do you like? What's your favorite mock? Now, we got two questions from Lego Kinesh. What, <laughs> what you guys like in Lego and what, why you like Lego. So what you guys like in Lego, and what? why do you like Lego? Kind of seems like those are two of the same question. What and why? What, what do I like? I love the pieces. Like, I love, I love, um, yeah, I definitely like the pieces in Lego. The quality is there. So if we're answering what, like what specifically about Lego that you like, it's the quality. In, in relation to other building blocks? Yeah, maybe. Definitely the quality and just, the established community, um, but just the creativity as well. Just right. Lego as a building medium, like that's the one. It's like mm -hmm. that's what draws me to it. Like yeah. being able to build whatever you want. Like Good there's point. really no limit to it. I think yeah, the... just your own skill and like creativity. Damn it, you, you took my answer. Yeah, I that's what I like. I like the fact that Lego requires no skill. The system is built to teach you how to use it without even explaining. Any kid can look at these bricks and think, huh, I should be able to figure this out.
stack right on top. And you, you require no skill. You need, you don't require um, any training, any, any sort of um, educational background to operate and build with these bricks. That's the best part about them. Anybody can use it. And given your imagination, I think, I think the world would really benefit having more access to light bulbs. And that's, I really wish there was a project that I wanted to work with um, for third world countries to provide Lego because not every country has Lego. But to be able to work and facilitate Lego things, Lego workshops to these kids, just imagine how much their imagination would fly. Because they could just be seeing like, um, even having access to the internet. Internet and Lego, can you imagine like, what kind of future these kids are gonna have if they had access to all that? Yeah, it's totally. crazy. And we were talking about this too, like how much the internet has changed the world in itself because it connects everybody. Can I just, I can't even imagine like what type of things, you know, like we can have with the, with with this whole thing. Mm -hmm. um, Lego and internet, just two of the craziest things ever. Um, okay, so Lego Kinesh, thank you for those questions. We hope we answered it. It's really quick, but, um, can we get an update on our Lego build so far, Colin? Oh, sure, we definitely can. So, as of now, we have two different buns. We have a beet infused bun as well as a taro infused bun. Yeah. Uh, on the top, we have some sort of uh, blueberry drizzle that's coming off. This is supposed to be the drizzle hitting the bottom. We have uh, a slab of cheese. We now have a patty in place. We have uh, a thick tomato. And we have... Uh, Chris, what did you do here? Is this red onion? Or what is this? Yeah, I think they're red onions. These look like red onions to me. Yeah. And then underneath was... Um, what do you call it? Uh, what, uh... Mustard bacon? Mustard, mustard dyed bacon render, rendered fat. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> sure. Um, we have some... Some what? Some slaw? Some sort of like... Yeah! Right. Looks like, oh no, you had yam fries, I'm sorry. I had yam fries, yeah, some yam slaw. fries. Uh, these are cherry tomatoes for our, for our salad. Oh. If we have a salad. If we do a salad, I mean. Yeah, maybe we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Working on it. Anyways, so, so far, that's what we got. Ooh, this is weird. <laughs> this is a weird one. We're going a bit outer space for this. Um, so, uh, we got uh, five questions. Oh, no, no, actually, no. Let's go with this one first. The Brick Amigos! Uh, those are the same guys with the podcast. Yes. What is your top three favorite entries you've seen so far from all the contests? Wow. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. We're doing top eights. We are. So, top eights are is yeah. our way of showing you guys, like, that's uh, top eights for the theme though. Can you imagine picking top three for the entirety? That's eight themes. Dang. dang. Wow, we gotta really look back, hey? I'm Oh no. Anything that stands out? Top what, three. One of my favorites is definitely the jellyfish. Oh, Nathan's. I really yeah, well, yeah. I said like organic shapes and I just love the way he used the chains. Yeah. To make uh, to make the jellyfish stand out. That's true. Are we picking winners? No, it can be anything. Okay, so you got one, one. I would say the most impressive one that made me laugh so hard. I'm gonna have to give, like, it's not, oh man. I, I would say, we didn't play the video, but we put it on our stories. I'm gonna have to go with the Brick Amigos. Would they see me rolling? I ah. wanted to have somebody do the whole, like, they see me rolling right, song. Right, right. And that made me laugh so hard. It's memorable. Right. It's not um, like, sorry. Uh, it's not like a crazy build. It's not too over the top, but it is It's so memorable because that song, every time I think about it, it's literally Sean's build. They see me rolling. Like that's all I think about. So well, yeah. You, you hear that song a lot? Yeah, I see, I, every, time, every time they see, they see me rolling, I see Sean's build. Yeah. So I'm like, man, that's such a good, like it was a great way to 
to end it end it off with him submitting that. Um, so yeah, I would consider that one of my top memorable things. Um, but in terms of technique and build, oh, um, I have to admit that it's not a, the builder itself. Um, I have to say, so some of the builds that I've seen from this builder, I hope you would agree, would be Aiden. Mm. Aiden yeah. Deppen, for 15 years old, I believe he's, he's 15, but that kid can build, holy smokes. If, if, if he's the only two-time winner. Yeah, let's give so it that. Far. He's so the only two-time winner. Yeah. So. Yeah, in terms of build and, and like quality, yeah, that kid can deliver like really well. Um, Just interesting ideas, really good builds. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that, I mean, his favorite one for me would have been the toilet paper rig. It was so like funny. it was. Once again, these tops are memorable. So yeah, Sean's. They see me rolling. Um, toilet paper raid because I didn't think somebody would actually do something like that and um, the last one would have to be Yash and his uh, Italian job with the, the wheels micro the micro scale wheels yeah wow for 11 so years old he replicated the Italian job and made us think that there are wheels yeah. like well they were little cars they were only used like five pieces not even it was so good. For 11 years old, man, yeah. that kid is a genius. Like, um, if he keeps this up, he'd definitely be a Lego designer, honestly. Like, I really like the Ninjago castle that was done. Ninjago castle? I'm not sure if it was Ninjago. Matthews. Castle, but it was- The fire it, temple. It was like the fire temple. Oh, that Ninjago. was so good. That was a really I good like one. I like that one too. Yeah, Matthews was, Matthew really impressed us too on the spaceship. Yeah. Like, man. Also, one of my favorite builds was that seaside, that seaport one, back to port. Oh, back to port by uh, the eight, the Hayward brothers. The Hayward brothers yeah. So, okay. So we'll, we'll, let's do a recap for you. You got back to port, back to port, jellyfish, jellyfish, fire temple, or the fire, fire temple. Nation. That was so good. I wish Matthew. I wish you lived in Canada so we can actually see that in person. Maybe we when we go visit LA, like when we have an opportunity. Yes, we'll go to a show. To. Um, but yeah, for me it was uh, Sean's. They see me rolling, accompanied with the song. Yasha's uh, um, micro scale Italian, Italian job. job, and then uh, Aiden's toilet paper raid. It was so, so funny, good. so good. So, anyways, yeah, like we we still do top eights. So we're gonna do top eights for uh, what's next? It would be under the sea, or oh, that's just been done. Under the sea? No, no, we should no. That one's not done yet. No, no, under the sea top eights. No, I know. I didn't. I thought I, thought I did right. that. You're right. No, no, no. It'd be sharp teeth. We're going backwards, so sharp teeth and then spaceships. Gotcha. Um, so going to, like there's five questions here. Um, starting with Fraser's one, Fraser, one Fraser one. Sorry, that's the username. Was it your guys' idea in the first place to come out with these contests? Of course it is. Yeah, this, these, is, this is us. This is totally 100% creative. Part of our job. Yeah. You should see all the ideas. <laughs> Tons of ideas. <laughs> But they just need, we just they need help. They don't come to fruition. Yeah, it, we're limited by money, of course, right? Like, we were always looking time. for time, money, and resources. Yeah. So, they'll happen. They'll all happen. We have sure. lots of ideas. But yes, all the ideas are 100% creators. Um, let me see, what else? Uh, we, these contests we came up with was to help promote BuildCon and the contest. So, I mean, sorry, not the contest, the community. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to always focus on the community and that's what we're always about. So how long have you guys been building with Lego? Colin, how long? I, I mean, it depends. Technically, my first set that I ever got was when I was five. Uh, I built since I was a kid and then had my dark ages through college years up to my like mid to late 20s and then I came back into Lego in my early 30s which really just goes to show how old I am <laughs> uh, yeah I would have been on the same page as Colin I would have been building as young as five and then I took a hiatus um, I had my dark ages during college yep because high school Colin and I were still building during the summers and then uh, 
then I've been building since I started Creator, it would have been almost aimbot. aimbot. Well, it, Creator, Aimbot, um, ever since I got back, it would have been five years now. So let's say childhood to take a break college and then back to now. So five years. I would say right now, officially taking Lego seriously, five years. So Colin's just started. Officially taking Lego seriously? Yeah probably just within the last year just under the last year so I'm like eight months yeah eight months so. well yeah basically almost all right so thank you for the question let's see next one is uh, both of you may have different answers what is the first set you remember getting I remember exactly what it was I don't remember what the set was called yeah I was five I remember, it's like one of my only memories from this apartment that we used to live in my parents before we moved. And it was a um, race car set. It was just a car. Oh, I remember race it, car it was just set. like a single, a single car. Nice. And the reason why I remember it was I remember being, apparently I was being a brat. Mm -hmm. Apparently I was yelling and not, not being a very nice kid. Yeah. And so as punishment, my mom threw away the set. Oh my and God. She's like, you can't act like this and so one of those uh, lessons learned in life you shoot. have to you have to listen to your parents they know what's best for you trust me Dang. um but yeah it was kind of uh it's, it was a tough love but that was my first set that's coming gone unfortunate mine would i feel like mine would have been it would have been through jollibee for sure because i remember it being like a five in one set what? That's awesome. Yeah, like you basically like build multiple things with it. There was no wheels, so it was like all airplanes. I remember. So I was building spaceships. Of course. From a little pack, like a poly bag, yeah. maybe 50 pieces. And that was what I built that for like ever. I remember in the having, yeah, yeah, in the Philippines. It was red. It, I'm pretty sure it was red. It was red, yellow, blue, basic, basic colors but that's what I built with. All right, so next question. Uh, one more from Fraser, <clears throat> or maybe this last question from this series. I think Fraser may have another one up top. Nope, this is the last one from Fraser. So if you could come out with a Lego theme, what would it be? A Lego theme. Hmm. The issue is the Lego theme that I'd really want them to come out with is one they already came out with. I what just wish they did a lot more of it. Oh, with pirates? No. No? What is it? Lord of the Rings. Oh! Yeah. I just want Lord of the Rings. I love Lord of the Rings. I'm such a big fan. Like, That's a good I'm one. I'm really hoping with the, if the Amazon continues and gets the series that they said they're going to, they release new Lego sets for it. That would be really cool. Yeah. Actually, that's a really good idea. Like, I want to go back and collect all the old ones, for sure. That's expensive. I know, they're so freaking expensive right now. Uh, yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how, how collectors are going to find those old sets like that, but yeah, I know what you mean. Those minifigs alone are so I know, I know, so true. Um, what about you? Hmm. I mean, I, I really like, going with yours, I liked um, Galaxy Squad. Okay. That one was a space spaceship set. Probably one of the thing, one of the reasons how I got back into Lego, because um, they would take spaceships or a mech and they would come apart. So mm. you would have a mech and spaceship, or separate, like they come apart or together. It's really cool. Um, the other one I wish Lego would come out with uh, would be steampunk. Yeah, that would be. That'd be really cool. I would love to do like Lego sets for steampunk. Yeah. Yeah, that's just my thing. But a lot of gears, gray and bronze. I mean, a lot of gears, brown and bronze. Mm, for Very sure. Cool. So Stud Zone asks, dream set? Question mark. Dream set. So what's your dream set? Mm, <clears throat> so I really like uh, the Technic cars, like the Bugatti and stuff like that. Mm. And like the, is the Lamborghini or Ferrari? Is it Lamborghini? Lamborghini. Yeah. The new green one. Uh, but my dream set would be a Technic car set of that size but in a 1994 Nissan Skyline oh. R34. Yeah, they're doing supercars, aren't they? Yeah. Like they're those are not cars. like those aren't considered supercars. No. Yeah. Just a really old Nissan Skyline just souped up. 
But you know that because that's my favorite card. So. Yeah. That makes I like sense. I like a GT. I like the newer version of GTR. But yeah, didn't they do a Lego set on it? Yeah, they did. <laughs> yeah, the, the Lucky Speed you. Champions. But it's not it's it's not white. The same. It's not the same. It's white and red, isn't it? Yeah, white and red. Yeah, that's true. They did. But it's a racer style. I'm not yeah. a. Yeah. No offense to Speed Champions, but <clears throat> yeah, I'm just not a fan. Um, let me see. I'm thinking Dream Set. I already got this set, but I wish I got another one. I know I got three of them. Wow, greedy. I got three of them, but I, I took it apart to build my giant robot. Ooh. So it was called uh, Metal Beard Sea Cow. So that one was a good one. That was probably the, yeah, one of the first sets that I built um, when I came back from my dark ages and then a dream set like if I I guess it goes back to that question if you were to make your own Lego set yeah true um, I don't know I would really like it would be cool if it was like a mech starter kit but not like no it should be like I'm thinking like a mech modules so like yeah, no, you get a really good idea um, think like a frame yeah like a and frame. then they give you just ideas and like how you could like create shoulders exactly. or how you can create leg parts yeah so you would have you a create... catalog yeah right like kind of like armored core mm. so like you get all the weapons and like this series so choose your mech kind of yeah. thing and then it almost yeah it would be like um be pretty cool Ninjago. maybe creators should come out with that i don't know yeah, that'd be fun lego tends to just take ideas from other people so they could they could just do it. If they did, we don't have to do it. But next one, um, if you could own any set, retired or current, what would be? Those are really, those are very, it's funny how these kinda questions kind of co come Lead, together at the same time. These aren't the same people either, so. No, they're not. This one is Cabbage Face Lego. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good question. I already, I already said I would. I just want the entire collection. Of oh yeah, Rings. Lord of the Rings. Rings for sure. That's like my. That's my goal. You know what? If I were a retired one, would be um, Exo Force. Wait, do you remember Exo Force? Yeah. Yeah. I wish it would bring that back, but they're kind of doing it with Monkey King, that similar style. But Exo Force was anime. Right. Like you can't replace that, and I thought that's too bad that they didn't um, bring it back because. The characters had crazy hair and yeah, it would just be so cool to bring those back. And the stickers, Japanese inspired stickers, like the sticker packs were the best. Yeah, it would be great if LEGO had more Japanese like anime style. Yeah, they're doing a lot more Chinese. I wonder why, is it, it has to be a market strategy. I mean, the Chinese economy is gonna be growing and booming. It's gonna be like one of the next superpowers. So they're just making their place early on. Yeah, smart. I hope they do more Japanese stuff. I, I know some of the Japanese mech builders would really like that. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think this one's a question. You you never make them all? What do you mean? That's a question, but... Question mark? Ta-da! <laughs> we, we are doing it live. We make a mock every week. That's true. We made a mock every guess, week for the last eight weeks. I guess they don't... Maybe the question was like, do you never show it to us? We, we are trying, so... Yeah, I don't know what that question means. Maybe some clarity on that one, because it seems a little counterintuitive to what we've actually been doing. Like, we, that's literally what we've been doing. So, yeah. oh well, maybe maybe we just misunderstand the question. Sorry, sorry, Lego Saint 2020, 2020. I we, I hope we answered that question right. Um, next one is end of line. That's a really cool one. End of line. Where is that from? It's a good sign off, sign off like for something tech. I want to get into reviewing, but I really can't finance it. How do you guys manage financials? We kind of answered we this did earlier. Answer it, yeah. We get sponsors. Yeah, basically. To do it. Spon like if you show people the value in what you're trying to do, um, and you show you have enough persistency, someone will see the, it, see the value. The unfortunate truth is that most people can't just finance it straight out of the gate. Uh, the way we do it is that we actually bundle it in with our business. So yeah. we do a business, our, our business is events. So this isn't the event, this is just something that we wrap into that as well. So it helps us and lets us manage something like that. That's right. Uh, for a lot of people though, it really is just, it's upfront capital. So yeah. if you really want to review sets but you don't have the capital to do it, what I would do is just every time you buy any set, if you, whenever you buy a set for yourself, yeah, review it. 
Exactly. exactly. Just review it. Like, I mean, you're already buying it anyways. Just take the time, build it, talk about it. That's how you, that's how we should get started. Yeah, if you're younger, like, just be like, I, you know, for your birthday, just like, I want a Lego set. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be small, but then review that set. For exactly. Christmas, if I want a Lego set or for like whatever, just be like, yeah, just, just find a way to like get it. And then if you get it, review it. Don't just open it and play with it. Exactly. Review it. Because someone, guaranteed someone will be looking for that set. Yeah. And there are people that are reviewing things out there, but your opinion does matter. So some, you might have a different take on it. Who knows, right? So it's just worth trying. So it's a really good question. I mean, it's something that we've been thinking about a lot as well. True. Because we don't review sets. We we did at first, but we really didn't see the value in what we were giving out to the community. But you never know. We're going to try something different all the time. We have lots of plans. Um, Tom Aldis asks, will you challenge... Oh, no, sorry. Will you do a challenge where we can make anything we want? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, actually, <laughs> season Sounds three. Sounds like season three to me. <laughs> exactly. You came just in time. Great question. Season three, have you heard of us? <laughs> BuildCon, it's coming up. So there's going to be an online, very... There'll be um, an online, basically, contest. Yeah, basic contest. It's going to be fun. Um, here's one from Alma. Alma Deal Mita. Are you precious about the sets you make and refuse to use it for spare parts. Oh, that's that's a really good. That that one I have a really good answer for, but What's your answer? Well, I have so there's a thing that some Lego designers believe in. When you when they make a set, some of them say that you should build the set for its purpose. Okay. Because it's like Toy Story. You have to build it for its purpose before you take it apart and use it for parts because that's what they were designed for. So I've always liked that concept where you build it, you have it fulfill its destiny or purpose, and then you can use, take it apart. I always, depends on the set, because recently um, I've, been being, I've been more picky about the sets that I buy and use. Dep I mean, it depends on the purpose of what you're doing it for, whether you're collecting or building, Yeah. right? But that story that Lego designers tell me is that, yeah, we designed this set for a specific purpose. And if you respect the set, give it life by... Um, by building. By building it. Building I, it with its intended purpose. Yeah, that makes sense. it's cute. I think uh, every set, every single set that I've ever purchased before we started doing our From Box to Box series, yeah. have always made first. Yeah. I've always made the actual set, enjoyed it, displayed it, and then... Uh, at some point, I'll just go and be like, okay, I'm gonna take all these sets apart and just right. destroy them. Yeah. Uh, but since we've been doing from box to box, we don't have time to be building the set for its purpose and then taking it apart. Yeah. Also, it depends. If you're doing like a draft or something, like, what do you do? Exactly. You can't. If you're you drafting can't. a box, you gotta just, it's for parts. And that's the thing, like with drafts, I always buy more than one or two copies. Yeah. So, oh, sorry, two to three copies and you just can't. Like. You're buying it for the sake of building, uh, for parts. getting the parts. Part count, for so. sure. But yeah, it's a really good question. I'm, good I'm glad question. that I was able to tell that Lego story. Because mm. honestly, there, there are a lot of those designers want to see that built. It's not, Lego is meant to be built, not for parts. So build your sets, give them life, guys, and then take them apart. <laughs> I guess. That's so sad. It's not sad. I can't wait. I love looking at the pieces and like, it's going to be so good for a robot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Leon Restelli, Lee, Restelli, um, it's not a question, I want U-Wing please. You <laughs> want? He wants a U-Wing from Star Wars. Oh, I we, mean, we don't have a U-Wing, I'm we don't sorry. Have one, sorry dude. I wish we can get, I wish we got sponsored by Lego and then we can give away all these Lego sets. Yeah. But Star Wars is like the most expensive set, sorry. You're gonna have to wait and ask your parents, like, we can't ask our parents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Time60 asks two questions. Uh, first question is, are you guys friends, brothers, or something like that? <laughs> we are brothers from other mothers. <laughs> we no, are we're, definitely friends. We are definitely best friends. We've known each other since grade eight. It's nine. Nine. Nine, 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 nine. We weren't nine. friends in grade eight. No. He was cool. And then he became uncool. 
I was, I was always because I met you. Uh, yeah. He became uncool. We we actually met when he was hiding in a cupboard. I didn't know. We did not meet because I was hiding in a cupboard. I was, no, no. He came out of the cupboard hiding in class and I was just standing there. That's how I pictured it. That's I'm like, not how it was. Like, what are you doing? The <laughs> actual story was the Beyblade story. So. Beyblades, yes. You had a box and you said you had a puzzle inside, but really it was a box of Beyblades. <laughs> And I saw it, and then I was like, "Dude, you're to be. This guy is gonna be an awesome friend." <laughs> oh, really? But the death of my popularity for yeah. sure. No, I'm just the, it, it just rock bottom. <laughs> my, st my stocks. Your yeah, stocks. Your popularity stocks. Nah. Oh, uh, what was it? Um, and then we talked about Hamtaro. It's true. Hamtaro was also. Summer was all about Hamtaro. Like, it's so funny how shows like that come out during the summer, hey? Digimon, Hamtaro, like uh, even Sonic X. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, man. Um, which is out on Netflix right now. Is it, it is. Right? I know. I've been watching it with my son a little bit. <laughs> there you go. But yeah, we're we're pretty much like brothers, I guess. From we we grew up. Can't you tell our skin tone is the same? <laughs> totally. Like obviously. He's half Japanese. I'm not. <laughs> Summer. What are you saying? <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just trying to give him a good backstory, but I can't come up with anything. So, anyways, um, what's next one is from Tyne again. Uh, what's your favorite food? Oh man, man, that's a good question. Ramen. Yeah, Collins is ramen for sure. Ramen. I like chicken. <laughs> I like <laughs> fried chicken. We fried just, chicken. We literally did take a break on this. You probably noticed that we're. Well, actually, no, you don't. We well, only they, exist I mean, half. this didn't exist before the break, That's but it true. existed after the break. Those are popsicles? My wife. No, they're not. They're not popsicles, are they? Well, they are. They're just carrot flavored. Carrot flavored. This is tomato flavored, maybe. <laughs> anyway, my wife made Japanese katsu. Fried, so deep fried chicken. Mama Joy's special <laughs> katsu. Katsu. What is it? Chicken katsu? Chicken katsu. So that's my, yeah, ramen and you like yeah. fried chicken. I have, yeah, I want fried chicken all the time with mayo. Man, mayo and chicken are just such good combinations. They're like the best, <clears throat> best friends. This burger doesn't look too bad either. It's looking good. This Michelin burger, we could definitely do something with that. It just looks like a pile of mess. Yeah, really. Like we'll have to clean this up and do does, some like does Michelin. Does it look yummy? You know what? <sighs> If I was from outer space, yes. Okay. I if I was an alien, I would probably say yes. Cause we're literally like, I could. Mm, I wonder if we can do like some sort of rendering to make this look like delicious. Nope. We'll see. I think it's lost. Well, let's continue with the questions. Though. Okay, sure. Are we are we giving up? Maybe I can make like a no. Uh, what do you call the it? The questions a, are more interesting though. That's true. No, but maybe I can do like some sort of flat lay. Have this. What are you making, bro? Everything's a ship. Oh man. It's got yummy colors. So going through the questions again. Um, we're almost done by the way. So next question is from Derry Maldo again. Um, I, I think he asked us a question earlier. Yeah, he did. So he asked the same question again about rendering. So we already answered that. The next one is what's your favorite thing of Lego? Did we answer that already? Kind of did, yeah. We answered that in a bunch of different ways. Yeah. Like the favorite, favorite reason theme. for like using Lego, favorite theme of Lego. Yeah, we did that quite a bit. Uh, you know what? I, I have to say too, like favorite... Another thing I like about Lego would be the people. Um, ever since I got into the community, I think a lot of the people is what makes Lego special. Um, it makes them really cool. And the fact that they're so... They're really friendly. Like we have a event that we go to every year or try to go every year in Saskatchewan. It's called Brickspo. We love those guys. Like they are the most friendliest people. They make you feel welcome. And that's, I think that's a really great representation of the Lego community. Colin hasn't met any of these people, um, but when, when he does, I'm sure he'll be able to say the same thing. Like they, the people is what makes this community amazing. So. We hope you guys like us. We hope you guys like the community that we're building. Um, it's all about 
It's all about community at the end of the day. So yeah, that's that's what I'll say about that. Um, and then favorite film and TV show. This one's a different question. Ooh. Ooh. They can probably guess my favorite film at this point. Lord of the Rings? It's definitely Lord of the Rings. <laughs> what else? And TV show. Uh, it was Game of Thrones until they watched the eighth oh, season. Uh, so, sorry for that. the PTSD, everybody. God, what else is a really good TV show? Um, hmm. Like North American TV? Or like a Japanese TV show? You can do you see anything. A lot of, there's a lot of good anime out there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, for anime-wise, of all time. Dang, I have, it's it's split between Gurren Lagann oh, wow, and really? Evangelion. Gurren Lagann, dude, made me cry at the end. It's so good. Like, it made me, yeah, it was a very good ending. Um, Gurren Lagann is the one that has, like, the huge head with, like, the tiny little arms and body, right? Like, in that, one of the that in one of the things, yeah. yeah. So the mech, in the, head, beginning. the mech head that I made for Chubby Bot's Facebook oh, yeah. build, one of my friends, because I just made the head. Yeah. It's like, you should add, like, tiny legs and arms to it, like Gurren Lagann. Exactly. That see that's it's it's a thing. They made it a thing. What's your favorite movie, Chris? Iron Man. Like nobody's gonna change that. Iron Man is like the it's what started me on this path to make the world a better place with um innovation and creation. Like Tony Stark. Crispy cheese bits or uh, sesame. Oh maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, I, I think Iron Man is a really good representation of what, what I want to be. Um, definitely a billionaire. A billionaire. Nice. <laughs> Philanthropist. Philanthro 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 <laughs> and, uh, what was it? Play no, not nope. Playboy. Anyways, um, alright, so now we have a series of questions from Red's Adventure. A literal series. Yeah, thank you LEGO Star Wars guy for asking the last question. Really good question. All right, we're gonna see what I can filter through this. So Red's first question is, will you build a life-size robot? Will you? Will Creator Industries have a have a show in USA? Is that one question? Those are two questions, two questions. in one in one thing. Will we build a life-size robot? Heck yeah, we will. Life-size for who? <laughs> like you mean like the size of the Gundam, like in Japan, like the life-size one? Oh, it's or or size. like a like our height, like five foot, five foot like six foot tall robot. We could, I mean, I made one, I already made one like sure. that. So we we could, like we're already gonna work on it for BuildCon, so that'll be, I hope we can get, I have about a month. Yeah, so Dang, we'll that's a lot of time. We'll see, it might come sooner than later for you. Good question. Yeah. And, and then shows in the USA? USA. Hopefully. Yeah, we're hoping that somebody um, picks, up, picks up Creator Industries in the US, because we haven't, gone international yet but these videos are everywhere so if you guys share it with people up there and they want to work with us that'd be awesome yeah no limitations so, so it's we, all just opportunity really exactly so another great question um what made you choose the name of creator industries is that a question for me that's a question for you uh oh, i don't have an epic story for this one but basically like back in college i had this a brand that I wanted to uh, put together. Um, it was called Soldier Industries, and basically, soldier was a word that was taken from Final Fantasy VII, where all the special beings, I think, special characters, are called soldiers, like um, Cloud or Sephiroth. And so, I created this Soldier Industries, but. Um, when I was thinking of something more Lego related, I wanted to bring it back to the creators. I didn't like the word builder because it could be misinterpreted by... Um, I just don't think we're builders. Like builders are people that are more like construction based. Maybe I'm I'm just coming from to me, the builder, architecture. Builder sounds like someone who just maybe just puts a set together. A creator is someone who Thank actually you. makes something. Yeah. That no, Anybody? okay, that's perfect. That's a better way of, ex of saying that. Yeah. Like creators use something, especially like their imagination and and create something from scratch. Yeah. That's the way I see it. Right? Um 
And then builder is like you just said, it's somebody who follows instructions and uses no sort of imagination. I just feel that's kind of like the wrong terminology, but the word creator speaks more to everybody. Yeah. I think it's more like when you think of cre content creators, when you think of artists, we are creators because we're taking something from nothing and making it into something beautiful, something crazy. Even if it's not beautiful or crazy. <laughs> this is still art. This is still a it's creation. It's definitely still right? art. And we're the creators who took something from nothing and made it into something. So, I don't know. That seems so poetic in its in its thing. But yeah, creator industries. The, the industry is everything, and industry is what makes um, what makes things like products and stuff. And creators every day make a product. So, in in total, everything that we make, we are part of this industry. That was a good one. I'm a, that was a really good one. I'm glad that you guys asked that because it made me think a lot back then on why creator industries. And yeah, I'm just glad that Colin liked the name. Um, what's next for creator industries after BuildCon? That is a good question. We actually got a really good email about that one. So we're hoping that um, we can't tease too much, but uh, can't say yeah, I can't, can't say anything yet, but we are working on something really big. And we hope that uh, we can make that announcement. Um, I guess it would be part of our BTS. Yeah, hopefully as soon as possible. But I mean, yeah. it's a work it's in not, progress. It's not 100% up to us. So there are some other working <clears throat> pieces involved that are some are in, some are out of our control. So yeah. we're just doing the best that we can to make it happen. But if it does, you guys would be pretty, pretty stoked, I would think, uh, for it. Mm -hmm. It would mean a lot of content, that's for sure it would mean there's gonna be a lot of content coming. Right, right. Well, here's another one. Um, my mom is getting me, so same, another question from Reds. He, he asked a lot. Uh, my mom is gonna get me Lego this week. Any Ooh. thoughts on what to build? Well, season three is coming up. We can't emphasize that enough. Uh, season three is the biggest and best contest that we're gonna launch so far. Um, so we definitely suggest build something that you like. We like mechs, but build something that will test you, test your abilities. Yeah, for this one, you're not going to be as limited in terms of theme. theme. So we would say, really think about what inspires you, what what motivates you, what when you see, you're like, whoa, that's so like, you know, awe-inspiring, something that really... Uh, Get your like creative juices going, I guess, because mm. you're gonna need it. Exactly. You're definitely gonna need it. Ha! Ah, there you go. That's a man. He's asking really good questions. Thank you. That's a, that's that's definitely test yourself. Have something that will um, push you. Every build that we do, at least I like from my situation is I learned something from it, and I grew and I want to get better at everything I do. So. This summer, I wanted to revisit some of the old builds that I had and I wanted to show Colin these are the techniques that I did. Can we make it better together? We'll see. We're going to try doing some of that. Um, next question he asked, will your shirts, stickers and caps be coming out soon? Someone's paying attention. <laughs> uh, it's, it is coming. There what is are... soon? Soon is relative. Yeah, soon is relative. Is it relative. coming out tomorrow? No. No. Are we gonna have some? You'll know. We just, we will make the announcement subtly. Like, it'll be subtle. But... I know exactly what you're thinking too. Oh, I don't know. What, what am I thinking? I, I think, well, maybe not. I'll tell you later. Okay. But yeah, but we, there are plans. Would you guys want to buy shirts? I'm curious. Like, Tell us if you guys are interested in buying shirts, stickers, and caps. Like, show of hands. Maybe we'll do a story question. We can do a yeah, story. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do a, a story, story question. Poll. Yeah, it's a good one. I like that. Okay. Um, what are your favorite holidays? Nice. Oh, these are great questions. Yeah, these are good. Chris, favorite what's holiday? Your favorite what's your fe least favorite? favorite holiday. I'm going to add to it. What's your favorite and least favorite? Um... Is birthday a holiday? That is not a holiday. Uh, my well, birthday is one of my least favorite times of the year. Huh? My birthday is one of my least favorite times of the year. Your birthday? Oh. I just don't so, like the attention. Yeah. It's 
funny because we, we don't usually celebrate our birthdays either. So it's just one of those things. My it's favorite holiday is day. Christmas. Even though I'm not religious, so I don't like respect Christmas in that sense. Yeah. It's more of just like, it's just become a holiday for everyone kind of thing. It's time of break. Yeah. yeah. But the feeling, I just like it. It seems mm. so cozy, lights. Yeah, winter. The warmth on the inside, like the chilliness on the outside. Everyone's happy. My least favorite, and it's not even a holiday, is Halloween. I oh, despise Halloween. Halloween. Not really a holiday. Hmm. Well, what's the holiday? I have no idea. It's not, it's not a holiday. I actually don't have a favorite holiday. That's so sad. Oh. Why? I don't have one. Like, I just think of holiday as a regular time. Like, especially for the past two years, when I was selling houses, yeah. we didn't have holidays. Holidays was when you worked and it was busier because everyone was out and about. So it, it's traumatic for me. Like, maybe a holiday would be when I actually go on a vacation. Maybe take it literally like an and like holiday, an actual yeah. holiday. So yeah, holidays would be when I go with my best friend to go Disneyland. Not, the, um, not me, we've never not, done that together. No, no, <laughs> I have another best friend. And then, yeah, we just hang out and have fun in LA. So, um, what are your favorite colors? Oh, black and red. <laughs> black, black and red. red. Black. And red. Black and red. My favorite color is orange. That's true. Never, I've never seen them wear orange. No, I don't wear orange. And it's not my favorite color to wear. Ah. It's my favorite color. Yeah. It's just so unique. It's modern. It's so interesting. Then, damn, you would have liked Aimbot. I saw him. Yeah. <laughs> orange everywhere. Um. But my other favorite color scheme is a four color color scheme. Four. White, red. Black and gray. Oh, totally. That's Gundam, a stray. Gundam astray. Astray. Can't believe that. That's like the best Gundam ever. Okay, we're got, we're coming to the end, by the way. So we are we almost done this? How are we doing on this? Well, should you have we a, play you, it? You have a macaroon. Play uh, it on let's what? plate it. Here you go. What do you got? Let's plate this. <laughs> it's time to plate the Michelin star. You do realize these are my decorative plates that don't get used. We're gonna put food on them? Yeah, they, for once. I know, they literally never see food. Okay, so we have to assemble this like a, oh, Michelin. So first, we have the patty. That's a bun, Oh fool. shoot, I already screwed it up, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> Cut! Just kidding. What's next? Um, what, so what, what can we talk about the first first layers? Let's go layer by layer. Sure. So you decided you made this uh, first. That was the first one you made. It's a rhubarb and infused. And it was a rhubarb infused potato bun. Potato. Oh, it was a potato bun. Yeah, it's a potato oh, okay. bun. It's delicious. And what's the point of the shape in the back? This one was supposed to just show the fruit. <laughs> what fruit? <laughs> rhubarb. Yeah. Is that rhubarb? No, rhubarb is a root. It's a root. So anyway. cherry, cherry infused. It was filling space. Okay. So then, uh, the next part of our course, or menu. No, not course. Cheese. Uh, you had this. I don't know what that was. That was cheese. More cheese. Yeah, okay. red cheese. So we have this cheese. So we have uh, cheddar cheese. Okay. And then we have tomatoes. Yes. On top. It's like a full on tomato. Uh, locally it's like a full tomato. Locally grown tomato. Because Colin likes his tomatoes. I hate tomatoes so much. <laughs> Why did I make a tomato? And then we're gonna have the patty. Yes. What are you looking for? I wanna round this off. No, no chance, hey? No, all the pieces are inverted. Wow, that is tough. I know, I looked for it. My goodness, what the Let's, heck? Stop doubting my... I'm just gonna, I just wanna round it off. Like give it some, some flatness. Nothing's good enough for this guy. No, I'm just, hold on, hold on. We're hold doing on. a reveal, we're not building. I just wanna finish this. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Patty? You could've just, in the cooking world, there's a presentation side. Yeah. And oh. then the other side, you could've just showed the presentation okay, side. Okay, sorry, presentation. And then I'm gonna, what, American cheese? This is American. Straight off Age the, American the cheddar. belt. It was straight off the craft single slices conveyor belt. <laughs> yeah, it didn't even make it into the plastic. No. And then where we have uh, bacon fat infused fat. Bacon? No, it was bacon fat infused with mustard or something. Yeah, there you go. German mustard on top, followed by 
um, translucent onions. Some purple onion? Purple onions. Let's upset those a little bit, please. Right. Um, and Next, then, we have the other bun. This was a. The taro. Taro infused. Taro infused potato, potato bun. And put it there so delicate. No pickles. I know, I'm just we don't have pickles. How I we could have had pickles. I know how I met your mother. The way he described that hamburger. <laughs> what did Lily say after? So you had that to say, and you had nothing to say on our <laughs> wedding vows. <laughs> like wow. Here's some pickles, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I wanted to use the yeah, those green ones, but let's just put it here. Well, yeah, you can do two pickles. Two pickles, yeah. Little pickles. They're teal. Pickles. What made them teal? I mean, maybe they're like they were grown they, somewhere else. They used the. Like have, you been to, have you been to Jasper, like through the mountains? Yeah. There's like a lake that's like this teal green. It's from the limestone in the water. There you go. So maybe these were pickled inside limestone. Some limestone. Perfect. Vinegar. There you go. Maybe came teal. Same mm. as this nice teal brick separator. There you go. So we're gonna push that clean. ever so so slightly, and then next is the. We'll, uh, yeah, we'll drizzle on the, uh... This is the blueberry balsamic reduction. Yeah. Drizzled on top. Now what are you doing? A little bit oh, a little um, on the plate. On, gotcha. on the plate. Just to get that richness to come through of the sauce. Okay, and then to top it all off, we have a little slight garnish on top. Like a golden acorn almost. Yeah. Or one of those um, thistles. From what? From like the... Oh, those stupid things that get stuck on your pants? <laughs> yeah, those things. Worst. So just a little bit of Alberta put onto there. <laughs> what else do we have? Um, the yam. We have some, some local, gr locally grown yam fries. Some straight cuts and some curly fries. Sorry. Curly fries or wavy cut? Wavy cut, sorry. Wavy cut. Some some ones that just broke off because you know you need the smaller ones as well. Even at a mission star? Sure. It adds um, levels and di oh, oh the dynamic. Dy dimension. So deep. Oh and I don't don't forget the um, <laughs> the sesame seeds. The sesame seeds. Oops. On top. Where are our cherry tomatoes? Uh, someone destroyed them. <laughs> I made cherry tomatoes and someone destroyed them. Don't worry, since you asked, I'll make them again. <laughs> And before I we before we finish this off, we do have some some they're kind of like kebabs, but they're fat rendered. Uh, this is a carrot puree rendered in ox oh, not ox fat. What is it? Cow fat? Beef fat. Kobe beef. Kobe beef fat. Kobe beef fat. Piece. in a taro poppy a uh, pocky stick taro pocky stick uh, jammed inside and this is a tomato puree with wago beef wago beef reduction as well right beside with a pocky stick. And here's the two cherry tomatoes. Two cherry tomatoes, just locally grown from uh, the mountains of Japan, um, from Mount Fuji. There you go. And macaroon for dessert? Oh, yes. And uh, a savory and sweet macaroon. Macaroon? Mac. Just right there for dessert. Voila, bon appetit. This is a creator 
three star, four star Michelin. Four star. <laughs> All four new category. Four star. Four star. Here are our leftovers. Um, but yeah, uh, we hope you guys enjoyed. Was that it for the questions? No. Oh, okay, okay. There's I more. wasn't sure we were There's a few more. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed our silly build. It's really... It's fun. It's obviously silly. Let's see. Do you guys have pets? And if yes, what's their names? I have, have a pet. pet. You do not have a pet. I don't have a pet. Uh, I have one. I have a cat. And his name is Samwise. Samwise Gamgee. Why Samwise? From Lord of the Rings. Hmm. Because he's got brown hair, kind of like Samwise. And yeah. he's fat. Makes like sense. Samwise. Uh, you guys might, if you guys watch really carefully, you might actually see him in one of these videos. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I saw around. him running around in the background of one of these videos. So. Um, if you were able to have three wishes come true, what would they be? Jeez. This is... It's like Miss Pageant. Miss yeah. Miss Universe. I'm gonna have to start juggling and doing like a... Ooh. Maybe the bikini contest would be nice. It would be... Man. If I, I would like to be, if I was, hmm, three wishes, three wishes. I mean, of course money, money would be awesome. You went with a monetary first. What about world peace, Chris? No, <laughs> no world peace. I, I want to be able to solve that somehow. So you still want world peace. That's still part of your, you just want to do it yourself. Yeah, but world peace, so do, do you think? Oh, I don't want to get into you this. You want Tony Stark yet. I want Tony Stark it. Yeah, I want to be able to be super smart that I can build anything I want. That'd be super awesome. Um, I would like, yeah, I would like to be... Yeah, I guess if I was smart, I'd be able to generate money already. So I don't need to be super rich, but be able to invent anything I want. I wish I could... Another thing too is I wish I could read and absorb the knowledge of a book in one day. Not even instantly? One day, you're still gonna limit yourself to one day. You could have just done instantly. It's a wish, Chris. <laughs> Damn it. All right, fine. I, I still want to be subject to time. I know. You're I'm still, still trying to you're be. You're still humble about it. I'm you're still like, trying to be um, like that's patient. And then uh, you can oh just man. wish for patience on your third wish. Ooh, that's a good. One. God, I blew it. Oh, man. I screwed up. Um, uh, no, I think then. Oh man, I was thinking, I wish I could have all the acronym jackets in you're existence, so, but I'm smart you're and so I'm rich. <laughs> Alright Chris, what are the three things I would wish for? <laughs> what are you going for? I wish that every nation, race, and religion was able to live in some sort of harmony. Hey, me look bad. I mean, like, that's such a cause for so much issues in the world. Like, so much- Abolish- So much racist, so, so much wasted resources spent on like wars and fighting yeah, each other like true. can you imagine like the technological advances that humankind could have it'd be like star trek when you get to star trek level where you know <laughs> that's what I mean? a good one that's so, a really good one like that that would be really awesome for me my second wish would be to uh be able to leap forward in time because mm. i so badly want to know what the technology of tomorrow is going to be yeah like i want to i want to be able to go forward 50 years 100 years a thousand years and be like like this is the technology. Like that's what I'm bummed about. And then you like, can tell me about it and I'm like, let's make it. I'm not coming back to you. Oh. I'm going forward still. So. Oh, you're gonna keep I'm going. Keep going forward. I wanna live in that awesome technology. Why don't I come back? That's true. I didn't say I wanna come back. I said only leap forward in time. Oh, dang. That's so sad. I know. We'll never see each other. Yeah, well, I'll bring you with me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh what would be the third one? Hmm. Unlimited resources to buy leg. <laughs> Yes. So that we can make this more content for you guys. Dude, I guess I should have just wished for Creator to like have a million followers. But imagine if it thing. was instant. No, that would We wouldn't cool. know how to... We, won't, we wouldn't know how to navigate through all that. But if you like, guys like this content, please like and subscribe. <laughs> like... Help us get to a million. Every person is that one closer to a million. Oh, it guys, literally takes every step. Even if we get to 5,000 by the, the end of next year. The goal is 5,000 subs. Plus, yeah. If we get to 5,000 and 5,000 on our Facebook, our Instagram, and whatever, we are gonna tell you guys about the big plan. <laughs> there is a plan. There is a plan. There's a grand plan. All right, what's next? Um, I think you already said, what's your favorite movie? We already answered that. 
What is your dream car? I believe you answered that. I did. Um, I did in a roundabout way. I said in my set, my dream car would be a souped up, just super mint 1994 Nissan Skyline R34. It's a good one. I, I would like, um, I would like two, either two, uh, GTR, Nissan GTR, or an Audi R8, or like an A7, whatever, like right now, that would be. Just an Audi. Humble dreams. You have humble, humble dreams, Chris. Well, I'm, I'm not trying to... Well, I don't know. I, I want something attainable. Gotcha. Um, nice. Do you have a favorite video game? Ooh. Wow, that's a good one. Video game? Like, what kind of favorite video game? Like... Hmm. Yeah, I have one. Like, there's... Okay, what's yours? Mine is Legend of Dragoon. Whoa. Like, if we ever... If that there is... was an ever opportunity to bring that back. That is the one of the greatest games ever. Concept is brilliant. You take a drag, uh, dragon, dragoon stone, and you infuse it into your body, and you become dragoons. Like, you, you have a dragon armor. That's pretty oh cool. man, it's such a great game. Yeah, that game was such a roller coaster. I love it. Oh, it's impossible. Uh, for me, in terms of nostalgia, I would have to say, just because every time I think about it, it just reminds me of my childhood, and especially Christmas time when I got the game. Oh, Ocarina the of Time. Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda. How did you know I was going to say that? <laughs> Sorry, I don't know. I guess Chris knows me pretty well. <laughs> right. Wow, he just, <laughs> just read my mind. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so when I was a kid, N64, Ocarina of Time, Legend of Zelda, so good. The game that I went like the most hardcore on <laughs> was Diablo 3. Oh, just that's just well, not pretty, so recent. pretty relatively recent. Super looking forward to Diablo Four. Mm. Man, I played that game a lot. Um, Diablo Four, and then yeah, I'll leave it at that. Okay, and then the last question, just maybe I should refresh this, just in case, was uh, favorite food. Wait, did we, we already did answer do favorite that? food already? Did we? Yeah, we did. Okay, guess that's it. <laughs> So anticlimactic. I know, but I mean, that those were a lot of good questions. I hope yeah. we didn't miss anybody. No, that was it. So let's wrap it up with thank you once again for tuning in. This has been BuildCon. If you guys are just joining us um, for our contest, you guys made it to the end of this video. Yeah. If you made it to the end of this video, we wanted to thank uh, New Horizon Mall for sponsoring BuildCon. Yes. Uh, BuildCon is going to be August 28th and 30th in New Horizon Mall, and we're going to do something different for season three. We're gonna announce a contest, and the details will be up soon. We're gonna have some awesome content for you guys to digest while all this is happening, so. Well, you can also digest your yummy builds. Yeah, because it's yummy. I get it. Nice. Okay, if you guys, If you guys like what you see, obviously, please do us a favor. Uh, go to our Instagram, follow that page if you're not already. Uh, go to our YouTube, link in the bio, like and subscribe uh, to that page. It's just started out. Uh, we're looking to get close to 100 right now and we just want to yeah. keep pushing it uh, as much as we can. The only way we can do that though is if you guys uh, share the content and subscribe to it. That way we know you like what we're doing and we can continue to make awesome content. Otherwise, we just want to say thank you guys for tuning in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the questions. It was yes. really fun to get to answer some of them. There's a bit of behind the scenes in terms of creator and stuff like that. Uh, made us think a little bit about like favorite sets, favorite parts, stuff like that is really interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Would you it like nice it? looking. Yeah, for sure. I think this is a different format. Do you guys like it? Let us know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you guys want us to keep doing this, let us know if you guys have any ideas for content. If you guys have things that you want us to talk about specifically, shoot us a shoot us an email, shoot us a message, DM us. We're on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. You know where to find us. So we hope that uh, you guys like this video and be sure to like, subscribe, and tune in for the next video. See you guys. Bye. Bye.